Excellent, excellent. Then let's get this show <laughs> on the run with today's episode. So, hi. Hello and welcome everyone to another episode of the Astartes Anonymous podcast, the single most unfocused and unhinged collection of goobers in 40k YouTuber sphere. So, for today's episode we have yet another silly topic for you all where we will delve into some of the silliest moments of the 40k setting, and for this special occasion we have brought in our dear Kronos. So, without further ado, I have found myself trapped inside the bowels of this hellish machine we now know as a space hulk and i am trapped with a deity who brought sunlight to the cold desolate wasteland of sweden a man so addicted to caffeine that his blood has turned to coffee yep. and a harlequin that last time he was here sang there is no cock like horse cock <laughs> oh i so, forgot about that <laughs> i'm your host lucas or better known as moots and these are my co-hosts hi there i'm tom and i like chocolate milk and vodka, and not necessarily together. Wig. <laughs> Hello, I'm Aaron. I am the Swedish sun god incarnate. <laughs> Nothing from the Harlequin. Is he dead? Grodo. I thought you were gonna. I thought. I thought you were gonna. Go next. <laughs> I did. I did uh, mine. He did go. Next. <laughs> Whoopsie. Um, Great start. Boys. Hi, I am. I am Crone of the Harlequin, also known as Live from the Black Library, and I am. I think the single bastion of livable... I think I'm the only person in a livable place on Earth in the podcast because everyone else is either European or on the um, the West Coast. So... <laughs> yeah. B brave words. You're saying Sweden isn't livable? Sweden we, is not a real have, country. Uh, we only have <laughs> that's, negative 36 degrees Celsius. It's okay. That's, it's real. We're, <laughs> we're a real place, I swear. We're not just made of Ikeas and meatballs, okay? You <sighs> shut up with your European funny money. In here, in here, <laughs> <you're not> <laughs> it was only four degrees when I was there. This is true. This is true. It's Aaron. Like, have you guys seen? Um, have you guys seen the movie Robots? Yes. You know. Uh, yes. Yeah. That's that's it, it. You know the opening scene where they put where they put Rodney together. <laughs> that's how Moots was put together. Except they got the box of parts from IKEA. Oh God! <laughs> oh, that's why he hasn't grown. Yeah, Holy it, it, it was just—it's one fixed model. It doesn't change. <laughs> Holy fixed model. shit! All right, all right. <laughs> I uh, th this funny is... thing. It's a common misconception that products from IKEA are named in Swedish. The reality is that the Swedish language is derived from the IKEA root language. Mm. Yes, <laughs> it's like the Latin this... of Scandinavia. This is true. This is true. Um. As a as a known Swede, I can confirm that uh, th this is where we <laughs> we find the roots of the Swedish language. <laughs> Fucking IKEA manuals. <laughs> there's 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 something... texts. <laughs> God, I I don't know if I can properly explain it, but there's something eldritch about going to an IKEA. You know, it really is. I think it's I, I think that's why they made that one SCP. Um, there's, there's one SCP that's just an infinite Ikea with mannequin mm -hmm. employees that will attack you in full force if they catch you yeah. uh, below, yeah. quote-unquote, sundown. <laughs> there's a whole ass game fucking based on that. It's fucking great. Yeah. That, that was, I think, one of the, um, that was one of the good funny SCPs or, like, the, like, goofy SCPs before they all started becoming goofy and then SCP just went to shit. Hmm. You know, I can't help but think if you go deep enough into an Ikea, you'll find, like, a factory line of people being built like terminator style people being built except instead of them being arnold schwarzenegger they're all just moots <laughs> no, just see, the that's, production that's, line of that, moots. that's that one scene from the real slim shady music video <laughs> <laughs> it's even better because they're blonde <laughs> <laughs> Oh, well, I mean, it's funny that you say this because Ikea's, like the way that they have built the stores, are purposefully built so that you lose track of time and space. So that they actually legit want you to just get lost and forget how long you've been in there. Yeah, casinos, it's efficient. casinos do the same thing. So, like, yeah. I, I guess when you go shop at Ikea, you are kind of gambling with whatever you're going to get. So I think, <laughs> I, think, I think it tracks. 
you, you are gambling with your money because <laughs> the, the the gamble is do you walk out you, you, with money left? The thing, <laughs> no, the thing was no, it's because when you when you get something from IKEA, you're either gonna have that for the rest of your life. Or it's not even going to make it to the parking lot before it breaks. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, it's, that's, there's that's no in true. between. <laughs> that's fucking true. Well, it's fun, funny that because uh, uh, a couple of months ago for preparation for when uh, Aaron was going to come here to Sweden, um, me and my uh, sister went and got a... Um, a pull-out sofa, uh, a new one because oh, we had an old one, and uh, we wanted to. Uh, I wanted to replace uh, the uh, um, the old one so he could actually live, sleep on something rather nice. Uh, and uh, uh, legit, I was uh, fearing for my life that the sofa would fucking fly out of our uh, boot, not the boot, the um, uh, what's the other side of the car? Or the the luggage compartment? Because uh, me and my so the boot. Me and my sister had shoved it into the car, and we had to leave the <laughs> the luggage compartment partially open. And uh, I had like strapped damn box uh, to uh, as as fast uh, as good as I could, <laughs> and uh, you know I was just sat there in the back, like holding on, physically holding on to the box, just hoping that it wouldn't just <laughs> that the luggage compartment door just would fly open and just absolutely demolish the poor driver behind us. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Thankfully. The last thing they see is just like, oh, a, a fluidug is the name of the fucking Swedish, whatever the fucking thing is called in Swedish, it hits them <laughs> at 90. <laughs> Spot on. But um, <laughs> yeah. the first thing that came to mind was just you, like, tied to it on the backside, or, like, outside of the car. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm wondering, like, what what are the laws in like Sweden in regard to how far something can project out of the trunk of your car with with the roof open? Because I believe that there there is a specific mm. limit, and if they measure it and it's too much, you will be fined pretty badly. Or if they just eyeball it and believe it's not secured enough, you can get a ticket. Yeah, yeah, that's uh, it's the same here in Sweden. Um, <laughs> but uh, we were neither stopped and. The uh, pull-out sofa didn't did actually make it all the way to uh, the right place. Mm -hmm. So all in all, great success, I would say. It was pretty. And we only it's... left there with the one thing we were after. So <laughs> it's it's the, the reason no one ever caught you is because the police cars are made in IKEA. That's the reason why there's yeah. like this there's this ancient deadlock between Denmark and Sweden because one's <laughs> entire armament is made from I is made in IKEA and the other ones is made out of Lego. So like For sure. nobody can make it to the <laughs> battlefield before things just start coming to coming apart. The battlefield. <laughs> the yeah. Battle. yeah. <laughs> oh. Nobody. So. Can. So, Ugh. anyways, we've uh, maybe we should get on to the models of the week. But before that, I just want to say we have reached 100k subs and uh, blah, 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 blah. wow 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 at the time of recording about eight hours ago we yep. reached the magical 100,000 subs wow amazing holy shit i just i, I know we're gonna do a, like a very uh, special uh, episode for this occasion yeah but i just want to go ahead and say now uh for me personally i don't know if you guys also want to say something i just want to say from the bottom of my heart Thank you very much. Yeah, huge thanks, huge love. Mm. The support we've been getting on not just the podcast, the standard form content, but the, the shorts as well has been fucking astronomical. And not just from the community and the people who watch us, but the other creators as well. Like, the sheer volume of support we've been getting from not just Chrono, but Alex, aka The Gaming Storyteller. We spent an hour talking to Chaotic Voices earlier today. Um, the Remembrancer, we spent, like, mm -hmm. a, a, over the last couple of days, we spent a couple of hours in the VC with just he and us. Uh, and, and you know a plethora of others whose names are eluding me uh, at the moment. It's it's been wonderful, you know. It's absolutely amazing. I I can't believe. It. I mean, we have Mr. Bones. We have Grimdark Half Off. It's uh, all of you guys, uh, the community, uh, even apparently Tom's uh, store manager. We <laughs> uh, <laughs> got local GW man. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Ah, uh, it's it's just amazing. It's absolutely fantastic. Just thank you. To weigh in from the outsider perspective here, I um I've been following Moots um Moots's art for like a long time now. Um, 
And like, that's how I actually found out about the channel was, um, I think it was because I saw, started seeing that, oh, it's Moots. So I'm like, oh, I know that guy yeah. is an artist. And then I saw that you were doing lore <laughs> and it was back when the channel was really small. So like, I've been, I've yeah. been watching you guys grow astronomically throughout this entire time. And it's literally just blew, blown me away what you guys have accomplished. It's genuinely insane. As a YouTuber, you, you should, you'll like this. The, one of the most pivotal and, um, memorable conversations I've ever had with another YouTuber was when we were at about 1.2k subs. And I was sat in our voice chat in the Discord. We were at 1.2k subs. And you jumped in that voice chat with me. And we spoke for about an hour. And I remember pretty much everything you said. Everything you said about the community. Everything you said about the other creators. All the, the little bits of support. And the, 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 the overture of, hey guys, I think you're going somewhere with this. Um, <laughs> I remember that. I, I absolutely remember that conversation, yeah. And it's it's absolutely crazy because that wasn't very long ago. That was like nine months ago. Yeah, that was like nine months ago. We were like one point two k, and we were I, thrilled I, to be there. You know, we were I, thrilled I think to I was be like around five k or something. I myself was also very small at the time. Like I had just made the transition from doing memes on the Chrono the Harlequin channel to starting live from the Black Library. Yeah, like I was like only and like a few months in. And it's mental. I mean, we've had this journey where the. The shorts have gone fucking nuts. The podcast has been going steady. The standard form stuff has been going steady. Uh, and I remember it was only a few months ago you did that um, that amazing first edition law video when it just exploded, just yeah, utterly that exploded. Really that video was so good. That you one's know? sitting and, at and like community three hundred thousand. Yeah, that's crazy. It's well deserved. Thank you. Out of the, out of the two videos I've done, the two that have gotten me the most subscribers is that one and the one about current plot lines where i talk about you know the king in yellow and what happened yeah. with the the, um, the dark pact and you know the death of the current fabricator general and the indomitus crusade just going over all the current plot lines in the warhammer 40k setting and even though that one got less like i'd like a hundred thousand views less than the um first edition lore one yeah. it netted me almost as many subscribers that one really got people in the door and for a while my shorts were doing really well They've sort of fallen off now, and for the past, like, two weeks, I haven't made a single short because I just have not had the time because of um, my insane school schedule right now. Yeah. But I, I want to get back on that horse when I finally clear out my backlog of of, uh, of university work. But, like, yeah, like, I think the sh doing the daily shorts, like, which I was inspired by you guys to do those, really <laughs> helped knock me forward. And then, um, like, my growth is was completely not steady at all. Like, I just experienced bloated um over the course of a few months from like yeah 14 000 to like forty thousand, and now I've, <laughs> I've, I've started tapered off and i've and i've just passed fifty six thousand. so again yeah like it's insane like seeing how fast you guys have grown well it was it was really wonderful because uh andy or aka the remembrance that brought to our attention in the, in the little creators discord a little while ago a post on the grim dank subreddit about all these creators uh, and everyone's favorite law tubers, right? Uh, a start is anonymous. We're not really law tubers. We do law stuff. We, we, I think we think of ourselves more of a, more of a variety channel, yeah. That centers around 4 to K. Sure. But in that that particular post, the sheer amount of times the name "Live at the Black Library" or "Chrono the Harlequin" came up was absolutely astronomical. You know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like, it, I'm often surprised how often my channel name comes up on Reddit, and it's always a few specific <laughs> things. People say he reads the books um alpha legion stuff i've just become like the alpha legion guy <laughs> and well, you've also become the night lord's femboy guy but yes there's it, uh, <laughs> one of those That's... two is very good and one of those is very bad i'll let people which one is which. <laughs> and then like a few theory vid videos i've made that people have really liked but like i think what what people really know me for is one reading the books very thoroughly and alpha legion stuff yeah of course but yeah, like it's it's really weird to see how much my name comes up on Reddit. They 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 really like me there, which I guess that's <laughs> so take about take away from that what you will. <laughs> no, of course. <laughs> they do not like me though, however, on TG. Like I have seen memes oh. about people like like oh, I hate lore channels that make points like this and I'm like, "Wow, those are all things I have made videos about every <laughs> single one." And, and there was one where a guy, I have this saved a guy basically took like an Indian soy jack and then just had oh, this no. <laughs> like racist oh, diatribe about me. And I just have that saved because like, that's a badge of honor. Like when you get a non hate on TG, like, you know, like you're, oh, you're yeah. you, you know, you're kind of somebody. Oh yeah. You're doing something right. right. I, I, one thing you brought up, actually, I know we're getting really off track in terms of the oh, video topic fine. here. Uh, <laughs> yeah, whatever. It's a celebration. 
Um, hey, what's it hey, called? That, as I said in the intro, we're we're never on topic. <laughs> no, right? just, mm-hmm. go, go ahead, <laughs> pop off, King. <laughs> you you mentioned um, the Remembrancer, and like he really sticks out to me as someone who's really important to me in the creator space because the first ever video I did on my channel was an interview with him uh, back when I was trying to be an interview podcast. It's the first video on on live from the Black Library. It was an v- interview with him about. Um, the Imperial Fists, like the old, outdated yeah. Imperial Fists lore. And then we ended up talking about how, like, you know, like, they they, they suck toes as part of their initiation ritual. <laughs> and then they, like, they have, like, weird the shit. butt the brands. Joe Rogan clip in the back. It, it's an old <laughs> shit video, but it's very near and dear to my heart because that's what kickstarted the channel. And he's just such a nice guy, and he's so supportive. Like, um, yeah. I think uh, one of the first big 40K communities I got involved with after a certain incident in my life um was his discord server and i'm not as active on there anymore because you know there's i just don't have as much time yeah but like I, I i start for those who don't know i started a discord server where i just started inviting every single like 40k youtuber and creator i could that's where a lot of like collabor <laughs> a lot of collaborations get planned on there and spitballed on there well, it's, it's, become, I think, it's become an amazing resource honestly not to I, I know hard, it's, no no i i know we're, we're, we're spending some time before we're getting into the actual meat of this episode but i really want to say like don't undersell that little space you've made. The amount of of people you've brought together, or have at the very least um, hosted bringing together, is, has been absolutely obscene. That little yeah. private thing that you've made, that where we all talk and we all get to know each other, is just oh, it's wonderful. It's so good. Yeah, it's it's a wonder it's a wonderful little space. I mean, I'm I'm not. I'll go on the. Uh, on the record and say I'm usually not the most uh, social of people uh, and uh, I'm Swedish. mostly just, you know, the people I know. I'm very Swedish, obviously. <laughs> Sweet. And, uh, <laughs> but uh, everyone is so welcoming. It's just such a nice place and, uh, you know, just getting to know all these people who, I mean, you know, when you just get down to the meat of it, it's just all people with the same hobby, right? And mm-hmm. yeah. uh, uh, it's, it's a great way of just realizing that, man, fuck, all these people, they're they're actually they're actually humans. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, there, there, there's there's people on there who are do model stuff because like you know we have actually there's actually been a bit of drama in the community as a lot of people know. But like we have people on there who do model stuff, people on there who are more into some of the gaming aspect, and some people who are um, just more into the lore. You know, that's and and the one thing I find really interesting is that when you get all these creators together, sub count doesn't matter at all. Like you'll have Pancreas no, no work or the Remembrancer and you guys, and then me and then people with like less than 10k subs or only like le- less than like two two k subs like a thousand k sub people and they're all just on there working together there's people with less than a thousand subs and they're friends of mine and we all everyone's voice is like equal weight and they all end up collabing with each other like um yeah general bradley he um hosted like a tabletop a, a tabletop sim tournament and then you had people with like again you had a friend of mine who does painting and some gaming shorts, who's really just getting into it, playing alongside Pancreas No Work. Yeah, like, well, that's, it's, I think, it's, that's, I think, the power of community in, in like, the, in the 40K space. It's it's like what Andy said to me before our recording with him a few weeks ago. He, he just said, a rising tide lifts all boats. And it's this notion that, exactly. you know, when, when one of us does well, so we all do true. well. And it's great. It's really wholesome. It's wonderful. And yeah. I, I'd hate to I hate to just uh, skip past this conversation because I, honestly this is no, super no, we'll, nice. This well, next is, week, right? This is exactly next episode, what I love. Next episode, yes. right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely, for sure. I mean, this is what I love doing. It's a podcast, after all. Oh, we yeah. just talk. We have a good time. Uh, unfortunately, we do also, or fortunately, depending on how you look at it, we also have a topic in mind for this episode. <laughs> oh, unfortunately, <laughs> we have obligations and work. Yeah, yeah. We still have the models of the week. <laughs> oh yeah, oh yeah. Of course. Oh, the models of the week. Can't should we, should we that. just smash through them? Like really rocket through them? The For loudest sure, motorcycle just drove by. That I can see the spike <laughs> on my I can see the spike on my waveform right now. God damn it! <laughs> I'll, I'll get rid of it, or I'll try to. <laughs> You're not gonna. So to to start off, we have a model by Tosti, and uh, it was you, Tom, who chose it, right? Oh, I love this. I've been watching Tosti make this model because he's posted a bunch of work in progress ones as he's been going. Uh, I actually sat. I remember sat with my girlfriend when we were watching a movie on one screen and had the Discord open in the other. And I saw this and I was like, wait a minute. 
He's put fucking Terminator arms on that. <laughs> yeah. And it's he weird how has. well that works. In fact, the Terminator arm is so massive and he's put so much stuff over the guy's chest that I almost mistook it for Gravis, even though it's not. But mm. the thing I like the most, uh, and Tosdy, this is a huge, huge thing in your favor. The paint job's great. It's grim dark. It's even, you know, it's not artisan, but it's excellent. Uh, yeah. And I must say, I love the uh, bonsai tree silhouette over the Japanese flag yeah, on the shoulder. That's what really yeah, gets it. That's I have really no idea it. how this connects to the law or your homebrew or anything like that. But as an aesthetic, oh, it's a vibe, and I it dig it. Doesn't matter. It's cool. It's cool. Yeah. Rule of cool is the looks, only is the only great. rule I care about, man. Also, that it's is some, yeah. that is some solid basic. Oh yeah, yeah absolutely. Absolutely. Painting, kit bashing, all in all, a fucking great one. No, absolutely. And the, I, I, just, just like you, Tom, I didn't, first one, time I saw this, I did not realize those were Terminator arms. Yeah. And then I was like, huh, <laughs> Chunk. fuck, that really works. <laughs> <That's>, it does <laughs> work. It shouldn't. It really shouldn't <laughs> work. No. But it does. <laughs> no. Oh, just, uh, just the fact that he's also dual wielding swords. Hell yeah. Go for it. I love it. <laughs> but if, if anyone's curious, jump in our Discord. Tosti is actually working on a, a series of dual wielding characters right now, all going to be oh done boy. the same as this. So uh, get on in. Get on in. <laughs> get on in. And next one, next up is uh, Max von Rosa. This one was chosen by Kronos. Hey, Th this one um, by Max von Rosa is really interesting. What you have here is uh, Terminators. What helmets are those, by the way? Those again, are part of the new uh, Deathwing Knights kit, those helmets. Right. Yes. So they, yeah, those are the helmets that go with these bodies um, naturally. Yeah, effectively, these these are um, homebrew repaints of, of Deathwing Terminators. And I think they're great. You know, oh, they, there's even a little Watcher of the Dark. What really sells it for me is, yeah, <laughs> the painting job is all right. And um, the basing is okay. Not to denigrate or anything, but what really sells it for me is the vision of the color scheme. Yeah. Oftentimes, mm -hmm. when you see the color purple used on people's minis, it will just be like the base color, and yeah. then they'll be highlighting around it, or it will just be like, like the edge trimming will be like purple on like black, you know, a la Dark Kraken or something. But this, I really like, because there's a great balance between the white and the purple in the presence on the mini along with the gold chains and ornamentation and pauldron um, edging, it gives this this very nice Roman imperial look. Alabaster yeah. white, imperial purple, gold. I think the aesthetic comes together very, very well. And coupled with the fact that obviously it's a great mini. Furthermore, I like that the, um, is that a captain or a sergeant at the front? It's a sergeant, yeah. Yeah, yeah the sergeant has um, that detail of having a lighter purple, like that uh, Tyrian purple uh, helmet and also detailing on his blade and on his purity seal and on his yeah. tilting shield. Like there's a lot of yeah. consideration to composition here. And again, I really like the vision going on here. Like this is yeah. someone who has a very cohesive sense of style yeah. and color For combination. Sure. And I, I think this is, I don't know if this is a homebrew or if it's just like a recolor of Dark Angels Terminators, but again, this is just really good. Yeah, I mean, you can you could almost envision, um, and again, uh, what's his name? Mm, Max von Rosa. So yes. again, the paint job, we're getting there. We're getting there. Don't know where we're going, but we're getting there. But the actual <laughs> choice of colors is indeed wonderful, and you could kind of imagine this color scheme being imprinted onto artwork of Terminators, and it being wonderful, special, not being so exuberant that it it looks anime OC, but not being so dulled down that it doesn't stand out. It's a, it's a great choice of colors, and that, that extra sort of magenta, deep purple, pink on the, uh, the oh god, there's a name for Deathwing Knight Sergeants, uh, whatever, on, on his helmet and on his sword and his tilt shield, it really is wonderful, and it ties it all together and gives it an extra pop, and god damn it, I just really love Watches in the Dark. I just do. They're just great little fellas. They're just little fellas. They're just, They're fellas. just fellas. Just fellas. To, to tie it off, uh, I think... Uh, as you all said already, it's, uh, it looks really cool. I'm personally very biased because purple is a very cool color well, in yeah. my opinion, and uh, uh, yeah, it, it just looks royal as fuck. I uh, I really enjoyed this one. Good job, man. Good job, Max. It's a cool. It's an underused color, and if there's one thing I would Definitely. say, it's I don't know why GW has this like fear of the colors purple and orange, but they do. <laughs> <laughs> so you see those come up a lot in people's custom paint jobs, but more so purple. Yeah, yeah, orange yeah. is really the black sheep color. Like fan, mm, fan fan mm. models don't use orange as much. That's like the yeah. black sheep color. 
Well, he, well, it's quite funny you say because Aaron's homebrew, Aaron's homebrew space marine chapter is predominantly orange, right. and it's, it's, it's yeah, crazy. It's, it's like it's it's mental that you say that because I'm now. I mean, I'm I'm probably <laughs> having a moment of madness, but I can't think of any canon chapter off the top of my head that's orange now. Exactly. Yeah. I, mm. I feel I feel silly for oh, that because no, there probably is a bunch. One, um, um, fucking Salamander successor with the with the book icon that looks like. Oh a yeah, the yeah. One? So, yeah yeah, and also if you want to be real. Uh, uh, asinine. There's also the OG sa- uh, salamanders. No, those were yellow and black. Were yellow, yeah. That yellow, that yellow black, yeah. It was like a very. Uh, well, well, I am uh, dumb. Don't listen to me. Come down this. Yes. So thank you all very much for these awesome, awesome minis. Yes. Thank you guys very much. So, guys, lads, gentlemen, people, question mark things. Are you guys ready? to talk about the silliest moments in the 30k 40k anytime lore i am can i go first yeah can i go first for sure man go right ahead okay so what's your what are you bringing to the table (laughs) so this one this one's actually great because this is I, i spoke about this in a short a little while ago and this is the dumbest fucking thing when i spoke about this in the short i was actually going off of information told to me by a friend now i knew it was canon because they told me the book it was from I actually went and had to find the excerpt myself a few days ago to actually confirm and just read about it. And the actual excerpt is even funnier. So I'll just read, I'll, I'm just going to read it out. I'm just going to read it out if that's okay. So this is actually, it's almost old law. This is from a book called Ragnar's Claw. This was published in the year oh. 2000. So this book is like 24 years old, but not so Damn. old that it's not canon. It's still in canon. <laughs> he opened his eyes again and glanced around the darkened compartment of the Thunderhawk, able to distinguish his comrades even in the subdued light of the dimmed glow globes. Seated next to him was Seven, muttering and cursing to himself, and grumbling about his hunger. His coarse features were twisted into a snarl, his stubby fingers locked together as if in prayer. He grunted and belched, and then looked over to Ragnar and winked. Silent. But deadly, he muttered, and then Ragnar noticed (laughs) that he had farted. The stink was awful for a moment in that enclosed space, such that the keenness of Ragnar's senses that he could distinguish the varying (laughs) scents of what Sven had for breakfast that morning. Oh my fish gruel and black bread, Ragnar said without meaning to. (laughs) Always a good base for a gas attack. Sven muttered cheerfully. A bright gleam entered his eye. All of the blood claws were having some difficulty adjusting to the awakening of the wolf spirit within them. (laughs) <laughs> in Sven, it took the form of this constant talking and muttering to himself. I don't think the engine needs any more thrust, Nils murmured from the seat behind. We're going fast enough. I swear, though, Sven rose two fingers length breadths out of his seat. You're just jealous, muttered Sven. You can't match my awesome power. It's Sven's secret weapon when we have to fight Xenos, Ragnar said, knowing all of this was so childish, unable to stop joining in with the banter. He's going to gas them to death. Yeah. <laughs> what year is this book from? I want to know. 2000. This is 24 <laughs> years ago. Oh, of course that excellent. is. Yeah, that tracks. You know, I, I know we, the we, spent, era. we spend so much time on this podcast shredding on Lehman Russ and the Space Wolves, but goddamn, these guys are funny. <laughs> I love them. I just love them. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, if I'm not going to tell fucking I'm, I'm still a child at heart that shit is silly but i fucking it's funny it's uh, it's just one of those mo it's just one of those moments that again i i give the space wolves a lot of shit i especially yeah. give lehman russ a lot of shit yeah. but the but the space wolves are in all wo- a lot of ways probably the some of the most human of all the space marines which is what makes them also so interesting yeah yeah well, well, to double down with Lehman Russ as your Primark, you can't help but be the laughing stock of 40k, man. Like, fucking really, come on, sis. <laughs> oh, we, could, we got away There's from it for like 10 seconds. We didn't roast him. upset at that. Yeah. There's a uh, lot of people going to be so unhappy that you said that. I think the last three episodes in a row, we've shredded on Lehman Russ. Like, we, this is actually doing yeah. him a service because, like, to be honest, we, as much as you can shred on Lehman Russ, if you take away the Space Wolves fucking plot armor, they're actually really good and they're really funny and they're really yeah. interesting. And this this is That's true, yeah. This exa I mean, forget how fucking funny this is. This exa highlights something that you can only get from the Space Wolves. Right? Mm-hmm. How fucking yeah. human they are. But not just human, but that sort of masculine joviality 
right? Mm-hmm. The other mm-hmm. space marines just completely miss out on. The space wolves have as just a core part of their personality, even 10,000 years after, you know, the Horus Heresy. Oh, I love them. I love them. Not For a big sure. fan of Lehman Russ, but man, <laughs> locking yourself in an in a air-sealed steel trap with your buddies and letting loose a fart so fucking brutal <laughs> like they can fart. tell what you had for breakfast, my guy. You know? God damn it. <laughs> It's like it's kind of spin off of on that. There's uh, this is not actually something that I had uh, uh, written any notes for, but just something that came to mind when you mentioned this is um, another. I think it's Lucas the trickster uh, yep. has a moment. Uh, it's it's not necessarily super funny, but I I found it I found it funny. I guess it's when the moment where he's talking about. Uh, like they're, I think they're going somewhere. He's gonna, uh, he's like with a crew, and he's gonna like break into some place. I can't remember exactly yeah. the details. And he, uh, he, he shows them like he's got a hold of uh, some, um, uh, what's a drug that makes you like shift or like uh, makes you look different. Oh, the, the the one that the um Ka- the Kal- one that the um, Kalidus assassins use. Assassins use. Yeah, yeah. I was and, thinking Kalexis uh, for a second. Uh, they're Kalidus, Yeah, I, I think that's the the Polymorphine. one. and. Uh, yeah, yeah, exactly. I think that's the one. And uh, he's like, yeah, sure, I, I got some uh, some of this stuff. And the other people are like, how, how did you get that? And uh, <clears throat> uh, Luke is like, oh, you know, I have a, I have a contact. There's a, a rogue trader. I... <laughs> Uh, I I trade them for my services. Oh, wink. No. <laughs> oh no! What? <laughs> it's it's just huh? it's just silly. It's as we said, like the jovial, very. Oh yeah, no. So the uh, the implication is that uh, the Lucas is piping this poor lady, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> <laughs> like if that's even. <laughs> Well, space if wolves that's even old possible. Law, space wolves old <laughs> law says it's possible. I don't know much about current law, but old law says that space wolves are more than capable of that. So, who knows? Ugh. Wait, is this is this who knows? is this from old law? Or is this more recent? This Lucas bit, or do we or do we not know? Are we just winging it with this one. The Lucas, I the trickster book from, from twenty eighteen. Oh wow! Yeah, yeah. Oh wow! Hmm. God damn, Lucas has got game. Hell yeah, hell yeah! It's it's just something about the name, I guess, Lucas, huh? Just hmm. <laughs> mm. It's nice yeah, to know that, that at least one Lucas is laying pipe. That <laughs> Jesus. That that's the kicker. It's the name Lucas, not the fact that he has the trickster in it. No 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 not at all. Not at all. <laughs> <laughs> so this is the thing, everyone forgets the opening, right? Yeah. Even though even though you mm-hmm. say your name is Lucas every single episode. No, you're just moves. Yeah. It goes in one yeah. goes in one ear right out the other. <laughs> of course, of course. Well, t- you all always call me Moots, so, I mean, fucking hell, even when we're in person, you guys, I told you, the first thing I told you when I uh, met you in person was like, you can, you guys can call me Lucas, and you're like, all of you were like, no, we're calling you Moots. You know, do you know why <laughs> yes. that is? Do you know why that is? <laughs> why it's is actually, that? No, why it's actually that? very simple. It, this is actually uh, interesting, and it's, it's why you guys call me Tom, we call Aaron Aaron, we call you Moots, and we call Red Red. It's because we will instinctively go to whichever name has the least all amount of syllables. syllables in it, yeah. Mm. So instead of calling yeah. instead of uh, calling Red his full name, we say Red because it's one syllable. Aaron has gone by Nurgle Boy for ages. That's three syllables. Aaron is two syllables. All right, call him Aaron. <laughs> Lucas is two syllables, but Moots is one. Go we'll call him Moots. You know, it's the, it's the same thing. You know. So a no. l- little bit of human psychology to throw in there, gentlemen. So if anybody were to of call course. me Nurgle Boy in real life, I'd probably inflict great violence upon them. Cringe <laughs> so hard you'd fucking turn inside out. <laughs> That uh, episode from Popeye where you got turned into a sausage after getting hit. Fucking, <laughs> um, which is ironic coming from a vegetarian. Uh, <laughs> oh but um, on that note, of the whole naming thing, even to Moots' fucking parents when I was there, I just referred to him. I flipped between Moots and Lucas. I was like, wait, they don't know him as Moots. But I instinctively said Lucas sometimes. He looked at me like, <laughs> it was it was the wackiest part because then when he said Lucas, it threw me off. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. At one point, he just turned around. I, yeah, Luke, it, Luke, it, Luke, I didn't know what you were talking about. Admittedly, I was completely I was, thrown for a loop. There. <laughs> I, was, I was about to call him fucking Mucus then, as a mix between both Mucus. of them. <laughs> but, um, no, no. <laughs> the first no. time I called Moots Lucas when I was in Sweden, he did like a fucking one eighty. Military fucking spin. Did you just call me Lucas? 
Fucking that guy just that guy just punched his nephew or something and just turned like mucus. Oh, oh, God. oh sweet that's Jesus. funny shit. <laughs> um, so moving forward here, I want to talk about something that I am known for. That being an Alpha Legion book. Oh Ooh, no! Oh yeah. yeah, I saw this coming. <laughs> Of course you Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> no, 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 no. Yeah, no, okay. Okay, I could get into something about the Tyranids. It would be a really old piece of lore, but I think you guys know what it would be. Mm-hmm. No. <laughs> no. 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 I require elaboration no. now. Oh, no, there, there was, um, it's, it's one of the very first 40k novels ever. Um, okay, the yeah. Inquisition, the Inquisition <laughs> War books, where uh, an Inquisitor wanted, um, had emotions about um a, a gene stealer yeah oh then to get like a <laughs> yeah. this assassin huh? to morph his, into a his, gene stealer his callous assassin girlfriend morphed into a gene stealer so that he could hit honestly yeah. like <laughs> right that's i oh. watson is oh. a menace <laughs> <laughs> no what that man is not normal no watson. no but okay jesus christ but, um <laughs> Man's got his mind in the right place. Uh, Everyone's seen the fucking me popping off about Jesus. <laughs> All right, so uh, game is game. Uh, my my portion here is um, what's it called? It's from the book Shroud of Night by uh, Andy Clark, and it's one that's really good because the whole book it doesn't come across as immediately funny, but it gets funnier the more you think about the genuine scenario. Now, okay. should I give some background information on the book for those who haven't read it? Because it's not one of like the most okay. widely read books. Sure, go, go for it, Edmund. Now, in this book, you get a group of Alpha Legionnaires from the Heresy called the Unsung, led by their leader, Kassar, and they have actually basically been stuck in a warp storm for the past 10,000 years. So we don't know how long it seems... Oh, I don't remember how long it seems time has passed for them, but they, again, they, these guys, for them, basically just got out of the Heresy, and they've been fighting alone in the eye of terror against god knows whoever for that period of time mm. they're completely uncorrupted more or less and they sort of they they have that alpha legion thing mm. of you know not being tainted and abhorring the warp that sort of thing these guys get this um vibe that they think everyone aside from them is an idiot because they get out and meet the the imperium as it is and they think these guys are, are fucking morons <laughs> but then they also despise the they despise the chaos space marines because they actually get sent on a mission by an Emperor's Children Lord to capture a beacon, which okay. is a human that is glowing and projecting himself as like a mini Astronomicon. So he's obviously okay. of vital importance. Mm. And he's on he's on a planet. Oh. And then this planet becomes the the one of the most bonkers battlegrounds, I think, in 40k ever. Because on this planet, you end up with the Imperial Guard yeah. Space Marines and the Sisters of Battle. And they have to go up against Emperor's Children, World Eaters, and then the Alpha Legion doing their thing in the background with various named characters showing up. And I will get into who those named characters are later. Because um first first and foremost, the Unsung, they need to sneak past the World Eaters lines in order to make planet fall. Because they're like a third party in like a four-way conflict. <laughs> right. And here's what it happens. Here's the excerpt. The Stormbird's Voxponder output was now masked by an agglomerate approximation of their enemies sufficient of their of their enemies, sufficient to fool all but the most determined aspects. Unsung, Vox Talthus, a moment's frenzied idiocy, if you please. Belligerency is key. Try to make yourselves heard over Crowl. And then instantaneously, instantaneously. In answer, the Vox filled with the hero's dutiful bellows. Kill Maim Burn! Kill Maim Burn! Kill Maim Burn! <laughs> <laughs> Sufficient. Sufficient, said Kyphus, manipulating the gunship's Vox to broadcast the shout as a repeated mantra across every open Vox channel. <laughs> Fuck's sake. <laughs> Basically, they just record that excerpt and then play it on loop. In so that they won't be brought under suspicion. So that if anyone tries to hail them, they can just play the sound by over and over again. <laughs> and people like, oh yeah, hilarious. no, that's in their, yeah, they're on their side. Yeah, and to yeah. top it all off, he also starts driving like an idiot. Like he just starts <laughs> driving really aggressively. 
He's like, oh yeah, that's that's what I got. Just be incoherent and stupid. We'll fit right in. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That actually tracks though. Like, if they think that everyone is a fucking moron, <laughs> that's like just behave like, and it works. It w- that's so they, they dumb. Make, they, they make plan of you know what the, you know what this reminds me of. It's that one joke of um, it's like a Family Guy joke where you get pissed drunk when you go to take your license photo so that when you get pulled oh. over for drunk driving, they'll be like, oh, you're not drunk. You're just like that. Yeah. <laughs> you're just like mentally defective. I just love the idea that like, the, the Alpha Legion is like, boys, in order to make it through this, we have to <laughs> all collectively together lose a couple of brain cells. <laughs> yeah. <right. Good> luck. <laughs> Our collective <laughs> IQ must appear much lower. <laughs> oh, that's great. Everyone, we're up here. We're gonna... There's there's other stuff from this book, too, if I, if I can actually give you another uh, passage. Yeah, yeah, of course. Basically, um, this is at the very height of the conflict, where the Unsung have the beacon. They're, they're hanging onto it for dear fucking life in the middle of everything, basically in the mouth of madness. Um, so. Hmm. They, they, um... What's it called? They, they realize that the Emperor's children, the Lord who sent them, also sent a keeper of secrets behind them in order to wipe them out. So uh. that he, he, I guess he effectively doesn't have to pay them. Yeah. yeah. So that now they realize that they're effectively screwed. Then they say, to hell with it, we're going to take the beacon for ourselves and just get out of here. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. we're done with this. And um, th- then comes a moment where things take a turn. Uh, because right when a canoness is mortally wounded by Some, somebody's just laying on the horn outside. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Someone just someone just died of a heart attack on the car horn. Um, I think my noise gate is high enough to block that out. But do note that did happen. Um, we'll find out. We'll find out. Don't worry about it. Uh, <laughs> Really it's, like, later. it's on the Astartes okay. Norse bingo sheet. Random background noises. I really wouldn't worry. <laughs> Is <laughs> someone dies? It's on, it's on the bingo sheet, man. Pay out. Is, um, Come on. I don't care if it was red or moon. Just pay up, <laughs> man. A, a, a canoness is struck down by a keeper of secrets. And it's very tragic because she's like, Emperor, where are you? And then it sneezes at her. He's dead, don't you know? <laughs> and then yeah. at that moment, it says, then from above, the saint struck like a thunderbolt. The unsung crouched in a half circle around Kassar's position, firing into any they came that came close. Their enemies were busy destroying one another, and Karn, yes, Karn, could mm-hmm. be heard bellowing furiously from across the chamber. The entire cathedral shook and shuddered, candles raining down as their grav impellers sh- shorted out. A bloody mist was billowing through the entrance's arches. Then a winged warrior fell upon the demon from above. That's an angel, said Halthus flatly. Kassar, they have an angel. This is getting ridiculous. <laughs> Remember, they were not expecting Karn to be here, but he's here. <laughs> oh, that's so great because, I mean, this, uh, as you said, this he's... is the time they first lay eyes. Celestine is there at the beginning of the book, but this is when they first see her. Yeah. And, and they just have a moment of, what the fuck is that? Yeah, the, because the, these the, guys the, are heresy era. <laughs> they don't know what that is. Yeah, they, they just, they're just fresh out of the oven and they're like, what the fuck is this? Come. <laughs> it's, it's, it's not so, it's, Holy it's, it's not so shit. much like disgust as they just go like, are you fucking kidding me? <laughs> they, 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 they are well past the point of disgust. They have been they've been sneering down their nose at humans at like what the Imperium has become. Ha! They they're corpse worshippers. These imbeciles. These fools. Like they've they've already gone through the five stages of grief of seeing what the galaxy is like. I'm sorry. And, I'm like, sorry. This is just, it's literally just the, these fucking emotes. Emotes. In the, in the, just, what I'm, what I'm and, and then oh yeah, at, like they. They, they're just, and then they <laughs> meeting Primaris for the first time and wondering what the hell they are. These guys have literally speed ran all ten thousand years of imperial history <laughs> in five minutes, and then at the end of it, they see <laughs> that an, a literal angel, and just have to say, Kassar, they have an angel. What's going on? And it, it gets better. Um, th- this is like one of the last points. This had been a war pitting the forces of Corn against those of the Imperium, and no one expected to see warriors in the colors of the Alpha Legion in their midst. <laughs> the Unsung used that to their advantage, capitalizing upon the confusion that played across their foes' faces, gunning them down or running them through before they could react. The battle was anarchic, desperate, 
all shape to it lost. For Kassar and his brothers, it was perfect. By some dark <laughs> miracle, yeah, by some dark miracle, with the last of their enemies still intent on hacking one another apart amidst the rain of falling glass, they were going to escape. Then, because they find like a, a, a ship, like an empty ship that they can finally get out of here with the beacon with. Hmm. Then, a charging figure emerged through the bloody murk, running straight at them. Armor scorched, flesh blood, fl flesh bloodied, massive chain axe screaming. <laughs> blood for the blood god! <laughs> roared Karn. <laughs> and they... That Karn, they're about to get away. They have one foot out of the door, and then Car notices them and just bum rushes them. And then yep. all they have to say is, all these traitor marines have to say is, oh, throne, <laughs> said Halthus. <laughs> they couldn't evade. They couldn't retreat. They had no glean secrets, no leverage, no advantage to use. They had only one option. Shoot him, a Bart Kassar. <laughs> and he and his warriors opened fire with everything they had. They, these people have had to James Bond and bullshit their way through an entire active war zone. And then at the very end of it, they're confronted with Karn and they have nothing left. For an Alpha Legionary to say, oh shit, shoot him. <laughs> <laughs> that's how this has been going for them over the course of this book. Oh, this is great. the end of the book. Sorry, what, what book is this called again? Shroud of Night. Mm. Shroud of by, Night. Um, yeah, by Andy this. Clark. This is, this is so dumb. It's this, almost this... like a third person's perspective on just the shenanigans of 40k <laughs> as an era. <laughs> It's like you could have this whole thing could have like a Benny Hill theme, and I don't think it would take away from the experience. <laughs> yeah. it's, it's, it's like, they, they, this, just, they just get now. There. The book is from start waddling around. This is one of the, just, we shouldn't be here, boys. <laughs> 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 we don't belong here. <laughs> it's just imagine you turn as like I like to imagine like Cassar just turns and sees Karn screaming and running at them. Yep. That's me. You're probably wondering how I ended up here. <laughs> well, it all started with a little something called the Great Crusade. <laughs> oh. And at this point, there's even a, a one thing just to show how crazy this book is. Celestine then has to fend off Karn to let the Alpha Legion escape with the beacon. Oh. Celestine has to step in on their side. And then at that point, they're like, Fuck it, just go. <laughs> like, just, let's just go. And just rolling with questions. the punches at this point. Yeah, don't even think about it, boys. Just go. <laughs> things, I mean, like, there's just things yeah. happen. This book. Just leave. The book Shroud of Night is one book I see people ask continuously for a sequel for. Like, they really want more yeah. of this. And and the writer Andy Clark wrote this in like less than eleven months, I think. Oh. And um, yeah, he had to make this like under the gun. And <laughs> he he it's it, again it's from 2017. But he has talked on numerous occasions about possibly wanting to make a sequel, and that is something I would absolutely welcome. Because, <laughs> like, jokes aside, the unsung are incredibly interesting. Because they are, like, not on anyone's side. And they are, like, basically neutral to everything going on in the galaxy at this point. And they have the beacon with them. Like, it basically sounds like the equivalent of... Uh, 11 dudes in a dream you know yeah. it's it, it's uh, it's just <laughs> a bunch a it's just a bunch of guys doing their best to survive in a completely alien and just absurd reality like in, in many ways you know 40k is completely absurd but here we yeah. have these guys who just have reached a new like they've experienced a whole new level of absurdity as shit just gets oh, yeah. thrown at their faces. Uh, it sounds like, like an the, awesome book. And also, I have more Alpha Legion stuff, oddly enough. <laughs> like, two from two other books entirely. Mm. I think I think the Alpha Legion just kind of breed comedy wherever they go. I, I think that's what I was getting to, yeah. Like, the, the oh, thing yeah, the is that bones. the Alpha Legions, um, very much so to the people, like, to the fandom, is an incredibly silly and meme thing. And to be able to play into that, but making it like, work in the favor of the story, like, about... It, it's really impressive, and uh, it's a really interesting take compared to, um, well, the, the regular bolter porn that we are used to. Yeah. It, uh, like, em embracing the absurdity of the situation is, uh, is clearly the way to go in a lot of situations because 40K is incredibly silly and absurd. Yeah, Absolutely. Um, and the thing is, like, with the, with the Alpha Legion, they can still actually manage to be 
really like re really scary and really interesting to read about yeah. like there's a lot of comedy potential with them mm. but at the same time it doesn't sort of undercut the legion itself no no i mean like as with everything you know each part of the legion or the, like the 40k universe is so vast that you can do pretty much whatever you want with it each individual individual war band chapter or whatever have their own completely different and unique uh, culture and traditions that form and shape them and uh, uh so yeah th th these guys sound so awesome i'm gonna have to read about them um yeah and speaking of more ridiculousness uh I think who is next up on the list? Was it what? What one thing? One thing. Um, yeah. It, first off, is Tom back yet? Yes. Yeah. Oh, you're back. Okay. Okay. No. Here's the thing. <laughs> the two things I want to say about Kassar. One is that um, we know he's not one of those characters who's just been effectively black holed because a character sometimes they'll appear in one book and then just cease to exist. But he actually does get a shout out in a new Alpha Legion book that came out, I think, in like last year or like 2022, oh. called Hero Master by mike brooks oh yeah and in I... it there is that yeah there's an alpha legion lord named um solomon akura and he's a traitor through and through so he's trying to gather all the shattered remnants of the alpha legion to bring together into a, a cohesive fighting force a big one that he can use to really start you know chipping away at the imperium and start you know skinning the cat and he's he's been sending out feelers and we get a reference to the unsung because like he said oh did the unsung show up and then <laughs> um, when his second in command says, yeah, they responded, but they basically told us to eat the ends of our bolters. <laughs> <laughs> like, they, they, like the oh. Kassar and his boys literally just send it back KYS. <laughs> oh, for fuck's sake. <laughs> just a <laughs> lightning bolt meme. <laughs> oh, that's amazing. Okay, kind of based. It's great. Incredibly based. I love yeah. these guys. Yeah. Oh. I, uh, every time you've said I, th 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 this, one of these nine, I've always uh, I start thinking of uh, w one of my uh, topics, uh, Kesor. I think I pronounced the name wrong, uh, Tom. How how do oh. you think you're supposed to pronounce the name? It's just Kesor. Kesor. Yeah, for some reason I pronounce it Kesor, but Kesor, ah. the incredibly hmm. mad and crazy uh, death company dreadnought. This guy is a fucking loon. God, oh, God, I love please. him. I love please. him. I, Go in. Uh, the master of monologues. The master of monologues. I'll see if I can find the uh, um, excerpt here real quick. Uh, but basically, we meet him in... Uh, <laughs> When he's like, they're fighting, uh, the, the Death Company are fighting a bunch of Tyranids, and this guy, out of absolutely nowhere, just throw like, just comes, starts bolting out of the fucking woodwork. And he's not like mad in the same way that uh, other Death Company guys uh, usually are. For well, he doesn't, he doesn't seem to think he's sanguineous fighting Horus. He, mm -hmm. he just thinks he's. Like at the Battle of uh, the Siege of Terra, and yeah, he just starts shouting over and over again at this poor fucking uh, uh, guy, the, or poor guy, this poor fucking uh, uh, Tyranid, or is it high? This poor, this poor Carnifex. Carnifex. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm saying he's like poor Carnifex because he fucking does a number on the guy. He comes in screaming. He just <laughs> shouts. He's like, oh, he, th this guy loves saying his own name. He, he, he fucking screams, come, K come to Kesor, come. <laughs> oh, where the fuck is it? I can't find it. Oh, I'm just... Just to summarize this for you. You know He-Man? Mm-hmm. Kesor is like a villain from He-Man. He really is. With how he talks and how he behaves. <laughs> this guy is like... This guy... I'm saying Kesor now. You could be saying Kesor instead of Kassor. <laughs> K uh, Kesor the Shane, Kesor the Mad, Kassor the... K Kesor the Damned. Whatever name he was known by, he had one of the greatest warriors... He was one of the greatest warriors ever produced by the Blood Angels. Even before he had been interred in a dreadnought sarcophagus. Um... <laughs> he's known as the damned one uh, and he has a fucking great bit here 
<laughs> fucking ho traitor strive and strain all you ho, wish traitor. you will never conquer Kesor while Kesor stands before the gates of holy terra none shall pass <laughs> <God>. <laughs> they shall not defeat Kesor it cannot be done it cannot and he be just done fucking, and he just fucking picks this fucking uh, <laughs> carnifex up he literally fucking uh, tombstone oh. body slams him <laughs> Uh, <laughs> and the, this carnifex is so incredibly pissed at this fucking walking talking box just fucking uh, pins him to the ground with his fucking one of his talons or his, uh, one of his claws and Kassar's uh, reaction to that is by saying pinned inconceivable Kassar shall not stand no. for this puppet of the false <laughs> gods release me so that I might no. wipe thy stain from the earth no you're pinned <laughs> <laughs> brother I am pinned here <laughs> if they don't pin you for 15 minutes you're allowed to leave exactly <laughs> and the fucking uh, then the carnifex tries to uh, is gonna open right, start opening its mouth it's gonna shoot him it's gonna fucking shoot him with plasma or whatever and his reaction to that is just going sorcery you dare you dare <laughs> not the witch to live so says Kesor. <laughs> oh god <laughs> Kesor is a very oldie timey comical kind of fucking funny. Yeah, you know, because he's he's mad, not Mm. in the sense that he's insane or angry. He's mad in the sense that he's literally just mad. To to, my guy, quote a phrase I've heard and that I've always liked. Kesor is the kind of crazy they just don't make anymore. Yeah, (laughs) (laughs) this is kind of crazy. He reminds me of like a uh, like a wacky human. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> Meow. Oh. Skeletal. Meow. <laughs> Come to Kesor. Come. Meow. <laughs> he man. <laughs> he man. Right. <laughs> <laughs> he man. <laughs> All right, who the fuck's who the fuck's next? I think it's uh, Aaron. <laughs> ah, yes. <laughs> What the fuck did you it's bring? From, okay. um, it's not a major part from anything, but it's from um, Rin's World after the Battle of the Orcs. Oh, okay, okay. And um, I'll, I'll just read out <sighs> the thing uh, verbatim here. What's next, said Cortez, once he was on his feet. He turned his back to look across at the others. Nothing for you, said Cantor. You'll rest until we can get an apothecary here. Not likely, protested Cortez. I'm still in this. I'm fine. No, Cantor boomed. You lost an arm, Alessio. By the mercy of Emperor alone, you're lucky you didn't lose your life. Cortez gestured over Cantor's shoulder. I haven't lost an arm, brother. It's right over there. Classic. (laughs) (laughs) I I was going to put that in my list, but then I thought, there's no way someone else doesn't already have that on the list. (laughs) So I passed it over and I was right. I was right. uh, This this is that level of like... Fucking Monty Python, fucking human. That is, that is a straight up Monty Python. Just, just, yeah. it really it is. just camera pans to a fucking arm <laughs> on the floor. It's like, huh? It's just, <laughs> oh, I, like, I don't know if it's the right word to call it, but like, it's this is the kind of just dry humor I love, uh, like giving to Space Marines because yeah. it gives them so much character when they <laughs> they're not just stoic badasses but they like actually just they act human yeah. you know and uh, <laughs> uh, yeah. well to be fair I'm sorry but Alessio is a fucking badass that's true okay. I'm sorry yeah, yeah, yeah. of Whole course, of course. Of removed course. it's just over there mate yeah. honestly oh, yeah. well, it's not of that course. far away right. it's fine of course of I'm course. saving it for later as, a, as, a, as someone who's had uh, you know their their arm uh, fucking p- bits and pieces of their arm removed I, I sort of feel him alright that's what God. that's what I'm saying give it a couple years man <laughs> <laughs> right, I have I have one more that I really want to do. Mm-hmm. I mean, I have a few, but this one is my favorite. I've actually wanted to do this one as a short on the channel for a while, but I've just been completely unable to because it's so hard to condense into. Yeah, I get what you mean. 
well, fifty nine well, seconds. Well, that's the hard. Uh, that's the hardest part about shorts in general. Fucking you it and is. me, Tom. We know that full <laughs> well. Whenever someone comments, you missed that part. Oh, oh yes. Yes. no, we didn't miss it. it. We didn't. I mean, we we have time decision. to fucking say anything. Like <laughs> that is that is literally the biggest blight with forty uh, k shorts. You'll write this whole thing. It's like you've got a word limit. You know, this is, I, I I spoke to chaotic voices in this voice chat earlier today mm-hmm. uh, and he was we were talking about some of the, the the pitfalls with doing 40k shorts and and i said to him how oh you know when you do shorts like go to the word limit because some people do 40k shorts and they'll do 100 to 150 words no you can fit 200 words into 250 words and if you're prepared to like yeah. talk at top, top speed right mm-hmm, mm-hmm. don't worry about it but what you got to remember is even if you do that you will still have people in the comments going, oh, you forgot to mention X and Y. <laughs> I didn't fucking forget. I don't have space. <laughs> you, know, you don't have fucking... Sp- How the fuck am I meant to talk about Gilliban's fucking nipple ring when I'm trying to talk about everything else, man? I don't have fucking space. Bro, that's the other one. Fate right there, man. It really, like... It's so fucking... Here's the thing. I'm sat here like my man. I'm trying to talk about the fucking fall of Cadia. I don't need to talk about fucking Creed's third fucking nipple, you bastard. Yeah, it's like you'll have to I mean, oh, fuck Man, me. Tom, I mean, I'm I trying to do it justice. Me, I prefer people who like interject and say, oh, you got this wrong when they're wrong. I prefer people who go, oh, you got this fact wrong when they're literally dead ass wrong. Then people, oh, you didn't have, t- you didn't talk, you forgot to talk about X, you forgot. I didn't fucking forget. I didn't fucking space. I know. Here's the thing. I think I'm lucky because I, I never really get those. Like in terms of in in my shorts, I never really get people saying you forgot this or you didn't have that because the way I format my shorts is different where like it's less about reciting something or like the hard facts. It's just me usually talking about something for like 60 seconds. And even then I go to every little millisecond of space that I was not saying something, delete it out of the script and then condense it. So it almost sounds unnatural because there, it it sounds like I did not breathe. Yeah. And there's even times where I've had to go and <laughs> speed up, like, you know, go to the speed editor and tick it up a little bit just so I could hit, the, hit yeah. like that 59.5 <laughs> seconds. I mean, I mean, this is the thing. If you go check out our fucking Warlord Titan weapon short, there's 260-ish approximately words Jesus. in that 59 seconds, right? That averages at something like, Oh, Christ. I don't even know how many words per second, but a lot. Something like four point something words per second. And I still had people put in comments saying, oh, you forgot this. You forgot. (laughs) Are you having a bloody bubble, my friend? (laughs) Like, my guy. I think some people... No, sorry, I need to get back. There was something I wanted to talk about, man. You've just... I've I've triggered myself. I've triggered myself. I I I heard it. I think those people don't realize that a short... That if it's over 60 seconds... It automatically doesn't. It gets delisted as a short and becomes just a regular vertical yeah, it's video. It's not short. It's not no. short anymore. Yeah, I you're think right. people yeah, don't realize right. that. Like, I, I, I don't know. Oh, oh, oh my, oh my God! I'm to, so fucking emotional right now. To, to top, it's, to top this off, to top this off, and to go back to the topic at hand, the p- shorts are time limited. We're doing our best. <laughs> Thank you, Boots. The man, the, 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 the voice of reason, everybody. <laughs> no, I had I had an excerpt that I love, and I want to read the excerpt out because I love it so much. It's such a wonderful little moment. And it's it's funny because it's not funny. Oh god. And you'll see what I mean in a mm-hmm. moment. It's um after Gilliman's return. And I'll I'll just I'll just read it out. Sheaves of blueprints were scattered across in front of him. He spotted something of interest written on one and reached for it, gritting his teeth against the purring of the suit. He always reached with his right hand. The integration points of the Hand of Dominion on his left made picking up anything nigh on impossible. Even with the over-gauntlet and its underslung bolter removed, day-to-day tasks such as this were a struggle. His armoured fingers pushed at slick plastic. Ceramite skidded across the papers, knocking them to the ground in waith- wafing, wafting <laughs> flutters. Oh, for the love of, he grumbled, as he bent awkwardly to pick them up. The armor of fate was bulky. As its waist joint prevented him from flexing his spine and reaching the floor, he had to kneel. He reached for the scattered flimsies. Fingertips failed to grasp the sheets, sending them fleeing in small armadas over the polished floor. He growled in frustration. <laughs> Abandoned his task and stood, 
drawing a curious look from Sicarius. I have the manual dexterity of a Legio Cybernesca battle automaton, Gilliman said, created by the lord of all mankind, the greatest armies in the Imperium, and I cannot pick up a plastic fucking flimsy. I'm adding some creative flair. He glared at the offending articles. My greatest enemy. There was a thoughtful quiet. Are you joking, my lord? Said Sicarius. <laughs> Gilman looked at Sicarius. He had to turn all the way around to do so. The pauldrons, ornamental wings, and large halo mounted on his back made it impossible for impossible? Impossible for him to see over his shoulder. <laughs> at least he had stopped knocking into things. There was that. By the throne, why am I expected to be serious at all times? Yes, Captain Sicarius, I am making light of my predicament. During the worst of the Great Crusade, I was known to make the occasional jest. Even after terror fell, I did not spend my entire previous life writing deep thoughts into little notebooks, but sometimes dared to enjoy myself. I suppose that was not recorded in the hagiographies, or whatever the fuck that word is. Humor is not something you were renowned for my lord <laughs> my time in this new age has revealed that to me amply Sicarius <laughs> 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 Gilman is just so spends this entire segment <laughs> just feeling nothing but existential dread over picking up fucking paper. He's trying to pick up fucking paper and he is dying. He is emotionally distraught and Sicarius is looking at his father like he's some sort of bloody lame man. It's it's just bonkers. And Gilman's just sat there like I mean to be fair, you think about it, right? In 30k, Rabute Gilliman, if he cracked a if he cracked a joke. His sons would laugh, yeah. Yeah. right? Even if it wasn't funny. His sons knew to laugh. In 40k, Gilliman is just this unfunny fucking nerd, yeah. <laughs> right? No, like, that, that was part of the reason why he liked um, Aeonid Thiel so much, if anyone remembers Aeonid Thiel. Like, yes, 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 yes. <laughs> because Thiel, Thiel was game for a laugh, as an Englishman like you would say. Um, and he could actually bounce jokes off him now and again, and Thiel would joke back. That's why they were so close. And then... Zakari is just people just stare at him fucking struck dumb and that he comments on that before he's like people just stare at me all the time it's so weird to him because he was one of the more like <laughs> no, I wouldn't say human or down to earth primarchs he was really on eye level with a lot of his legion and that is so like so missing nowadays in the 40th millennium. And he's yep, so frustrated yeah. by it. So that's where you get this. Yes, Sicarius, I am making a joke. <laughs> it's like it's he's basically been flanderized in the eyes of the entire galaxy, and that's hitting him. Because well, well, one... also one thing here is basically what he's struggling to do right now is like imagine if you just cut your fingernails and now you have to like pick a penny up off the ground yeah. or like yeah. peel an yeah. orange. That's the situation he's in. And I, I, well, imagine well, trying to do day-to-day -day work whilst wearing a boxing glove on one hand. <laughs> <laughs> That's ostensibly how Gilliman is stuck. In one this. of the I big mean, just for, punch hands. I mean, just for context, Gilliman does eventually get the um, armor of fate removed. I mean, there's a whole sort of theorization about how bad that is for him, or yada yada yada. Yeah, I, I'm. Cr but eventually, he is able to like operate normally. What book is that from? But prior okay. to that. He, this is actually an excerpt from, uh, oh, fuck. Oh, it's not actually a book. Oh, goodness gracious me. Finding finding where I've pulled this excerpt from is going to be like pulling teeth out. Oh, goodness. Oh, what, no. What, what, what this really illustrates, uh, really, is the, the same one as with the uh, your example, Chrono, with the Alpha Legionnaires. Yeah. Because it, it, it's, it's this... The, the absurdity of how much the Imperium at large has changed, uh, that the, these characters from way before this, like, just land in a completely outlandish situation to them. And, uh, it, you know, the, 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 it's, I think that's a type of humor in of itself, you know, uh, the out of time, out of place, uh, uh characters, fucking, was it called, the. Uh, the, the French movie called The Visitors or whatever. The Visitors. <laughs> They're drop, dropping some French lore here. Yeah. But, uh, mm, but unfortunate. Unfortunate. 
<laughs> fucking Lamau. Lamau. <laughs> Lol. Lamau even. Lamau even. Yeah. <laughs> the same brain waves. Literally the Christ. The communal brain cell. <laughs> yeah. Memes have eroded our brains, man. <laughs> you know, we we actually have, have in the um, in our little private podcast suggestion thing uh, an episode idea called "The Best and the Worst of 40K Memes." Oh God. Mm-hmm. Memes. Do you know how much brain rot that's got? That episode is going to be. <laughs> <God>. <laughs> yeah, it's gonna be nuts. People will die. God. Oh. Do we need to make that a tier list? A tier? Or do we just... Fuck no. Oh, fuck, fuck. 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 No, because the top fuck. of the tier list is just, of the worst memes, it's just going to be the I am Alfarius. I am Alfarius. Yeah, of course. Right at the top. No, of course. Course. I, I <laughs> will suggest you that you are completely wrong when you say that, because, mm-hmm. and, and I have something for that, um, and I think you probably know what it is, but here's the thing. I think you're you're absolutely right when you say it's it's that vibe of just how out of place a lot of these people from the heresy era feel in the modern setting like it's really wild to them like you know you have obviously yeah. you know you have gilliman and you know i think i i still haven't read lion son of the forest so i'm gonna see what comes up with that but i myself am currently reading through like i i, I you know obviously i just finished with the horus heresy so i'm currently reading through a lot of the um, the stuff in the current setting you know i finished dark imperium and i'm almost done Plague Wars, and then I'm I'm gonna actually have to spend an audible credit because I can't find it free anywhere for Godblight, and it's really interesting. And I <laughs> I didn't expect to like these books as much as I have because I was always like I'm like oh man the Horus Heresy is so much better blah 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 you know the the drama you know the characters, but I think it definitely does have its merits, and there are some characters that I've really grown to like, and some characters I genuinely hope like wow I hope I see more of this character I see genuine potential mm. for an almost Horus Heresy esque arc and the ability to become very well enjoyed i hope the fandom recognizes this character for how interesting they are but then i realized i'm like wait a minute i yeah. make video i'm like i'm like wait a minute i make youtube videos i can sort of enforce that like i can try and force the issue <laughs> i can try of course of course we we ho- as youtubers we hold unlimited power in our hands we are unstoppable we we are the chaos gods Mm. Fuck you. You don't get to make decisions about what characters are cool. Now eat the slop. <laughs> slop, 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 slop. Everybody. Just start saying, just start chanting, chant the word slop to the tune of the song Shots. <laughs> now, I'm about to say something on the topic of Horace Heresy books. It's going to make a lot of people either very sad, very angry, or both. Uh huh. <laughs> yeah. And that's, uh, it, it, it is a two state. This is a two-staged uh, fact. I have never read a single Horace Heresy book, and I still have my hard copy original um, Horace Rising to my left in a pile that's just covered in fucking dust. <laughs> and it's never getting read <laughs> ever. At, fucking at, at that point, donkey. I, don't, uh, <laughs> at that point, I would actually say don't open that book. Like, dust it off, fucking obviously, but don't actually open it and read it. Just keep it nice and pristine. But I again, rec- I rec- hard recommend. You know those books are basically free everywhere online. Let's not bullshit here. But you, you mm-hmm. read the book or listen to the audiobook. It's so good. So so Aaron, I I know you have ADHD, <laughs> so I would probably recommend the audio books. Uh-huh. That's at least how I prefer to uh, uh, enjoy As them. As someone with ADHD, and, yeah, I can confirm. I used to listen to a lot of them. <laughs> um, that's how the fucking Thunder from Fenris thing started ages ago was because of um, oh, yeah. I listened to the Thunder from Fenris audiobook where everyone sounds like fucking Archer Schwarzenegger. <laughs> so it's always just fucking <laughs> and, then, and then that's where the fucking put the, if Tom doesn't put that art piece on the screen um, he's a fucking coward. But it's where the clap of the fucking arse cheeks comes from. Yeah. With the cakening of Prospero. <laughs> Fuck's sake. Um, the fucking cakening. Yeah, Tom, yeah, you got to so, put the cakening on the screen now. It's, uh, it's have to, unfortunately. I'll do it. I'll do it. I'll do it. I love the cakening of Prospero. So, who, who doesn't? Who doesn't <laughs> love the cakening of Prospero? Yeah, cakening yeah, yeah. of it's Prospero. It's a masterpiece. God damn it. <laughs> does anyone have another excerpt they would like to talk about? Because I have loads more. I have. I have a fair few. I have well, a, fair, I one more I have a fair few. Oh, so okay. My turn. There's a there's a few people, but Chrono came after me. So Chrono, yo, you want me to go? Go for it. Okay. This one is, again, oh, it's more Alpha Legion, and it's actually a doubleheader. It's going to be a two-in-one, because both of these come from the Horus Heresy, at different ends okay. of the Horus Heresy. One, I think, is actually interesting. It's from the first... It's from 
the very start of the heresy, before the heresy begins, that being the book Legion by Dan Abnett. Now, in this book, mm-hmm. okay. um, everyone knows my feelings towards a certain character, fucking John Grammaticus. <laughs> I knew <Yeah>. it. <laughs> now, I, this character is... Listen, a, a, my video about him is actually very successful. I think it clearly had resonance. I was about to say, do I have to post Chrono's thumbnail for his fucking John Grammaticus video <laughs> you now? You can. <laughs> Here's the thing. What happens is... um. In Legion, he's actually a lot more tolerable and very interesting. His characterization is very different. That When I say he's good in Legion, it's because he's effectively a different character in Legion. Um, but th- there's a point where yeah. he was trying to orchestrate a meeting between the Alpha Legion and the Cabal, that being his the, the group of Xenos who were his handler and made him a perpetual because they wanted to have a sit-down with the Alpha Legion and convince yeah. them to turn traitor, with the caveat that if you do, Horus will win. But if Horus wins, his guilt will cause him to eventually burn out the galaxy and humanity will die, but the galaxy will live on. And the Alpha Legion basically are prepared to bite the bullet and say, you know what, we'll do it. Because Alpharius says, I know the Emperor better than anyone, and I know what he would really want. So what he would really want is the defeat of Chaos. So the Emperor would be fine with it. And Mm -hmm. that's the real reason why the Alpha Legion says for the Emperor... Like, that's the lore behind mm. that, is because at the end of the day, they genuinely believed they were doing this for the Emperor. And it, that actually led to right. Alpharius' death at the hands of Rogel Dorn at the end. And it's it's very interesting. And there's obviously theories. Fl- I have more than enough theories. Like, I have an hour-long video about the fate of Omegon and me theorizing on which one died. But, like, which one of the twins died? Oh, yeah, Betagon. 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 Jesus. What about Sigma? <laughs> what about Sigma gone? <laughs> no. no. <laughs> you won't just get a copyright strike you fucking making that noise moves. What happens is um <laughs> What happens is um so the Alpha Legion actually get they get the upper hand. They manage to capture John Grammaticus and they're yeah. flying him out to the meeting place, the predetermined meeting place. And it's a and then um it's um they say like they ask him to like, um, so what plan is this? What's going on here? And John isn't really saying anything. So then John's quote unquote friend Peto Sonica steps in and says um, to Alpharius, as I understand it, 42 Hydra, that's the name of the planet, was selected as a mark of homage to the Legion. An inside joke, if you will. I believe that in hindsight, John possibly regrets the flippancy of the gesture. Alpharius nodded. That, Grammaticus said, coughing but recovering some composure. That is the case, Lord. No disrespect or mockery was intended. Then Alpharius says, Is this typical of the symbolism and nuance we can expect from the Cabal? At, well, asked Patch. Um, and then, he's like, is this typical? And then John said, he's like, no, said Grammaticus. Good, said Omegon, because it's childish. <laughs> like, you put on this whole display, just thinking, like, you're going to impress them, and then they're like, yeah, that's stupid. And then, I, there's, a, yeah. there's another excerpt from instantaneously after this, wherein there is basically they they have to get to a designated landing spot on the planet um to to um you know to land their their spaceship and that's where they're going to meet the cabal and yeah. on it is there there's a weather anomaly going on in the area like a big storm is starting to brew and a similar storm like this had nearly wiped out the alpha legion on the planet where they were previously on, where they first met John, a planet called Nerth. So, uh, yep. So, um, this is the exchange that happens. A structure of that type was the epicenter of an atmospheric deluge that almost annihilated us, said Alpharius. And you take us to its twin on a world where atmospheric manipulation is already underway. I can see how that looks bad, Grammaticus admitted. <laughs> John, this <laughs> <is> Sonica. <laughs> Like, okay, now I know that sounds bad, but I need you to bear with. And it's funny because the Alpha Legion. This is the this is the introductory book to the Alpha Legion, and you get to see that dry wit of "I'm smarter than you." Shut up! Of "I know more than you" yeah. right from the get go. This is the first Alpha Legion book, and it, again, I just found that to be a really fun moment. Just seeing like. I guess, again, the dry wit and being introduced to the yeah. um, I'm Alpharius joke. And that comes up again because this is a double feature of a joke here. This one's a little funnier. It actually comes from the book Warhawk by Chris Wraith. And this is 
one of the last oh. yeah this is at the very end like this is um it was it's warhawk then echoes of eternity and then the three end in the death um books so this is right at the very tail end and in it we have alanius Pearson, you know alanius pius Pearson, um yeah. on a gunship with john grammaticus and Akte, who is actually Cyrene, the former Blessed Lady of the Word Bearers, and then his little cadre of idiots, who we've been following across the Siege of Terra for some reason. Um, and Akte had with her an Alpha Legionnaire, who identified himself as Alpharius, because of course he did. And that's a big mm -hmm. mystery yeah. up until later on in the series of who that is and why he's there and what's actually going on. Like, what's the meaning of that? And there comes a point where they are basically... They're, they're in a high-stress moment... And all, like, he offhandedly refers to him as the Space Marine here. And the Space Marine says, Yeah. I am out. The Space Marine started. Don't even think <laughs> of saying that again, or so help me, I'll open the bloody doors <laughs> and kill us all. Snapped all. <laughs> they, to put this into perspective, they are in a gunship, flying over the single most dangerous active war zone in the galaxy, the Siege of Terra, <laughs> on their way to talk to the Emperor in order to hopefully, maybe, save the galaxy. Because all believes he can save the galaxy with some sort of information or something. But he's willing yeah. to throw that all away and airlock everyone in the ship just so that he doesn't have to fucking hear it again. <laughs> I will open the doors and kill us all. And he yells yeah. that in the face of a space marine. Transhuman <laughs> dread my ass. Fuck's sake. <laughs> oh, just... I, I mean, I have to imagine, like, what the fuck were the, was the Alpha Legionnaire thinking in that moment as well? Like, he's like, hmm, all right. He, risk do, it he, this guy. do it for the vine. He did. <laughs> do it for right. the vine. Of course, he of didn't. course. And my, <laughs> my head canon is that Alpha Legionnaires are fucking memesters. They're the biggest memesters of the fucking yeah. uh, God. Uh, entire crusade of the 40k universe. <laughs> fuckers. That is true, because there is a moment in a short story called Long Games at Karcharis where... um. Basically, the Alpha Legion have screwed over an entire chapter by subtly carving yeah. hypnotic runes into the walls of the Underhives where they recruit from so that they were able to, like, basically activate half of the chapter as sleeper agents and get it to tear itself apart. And they had destroyed the other elements of the chapter that were already out, but had continued broadcasting messages of, oh, yeah, we're still out here. We're doing fine. So, um, so then the chapter master turns around. Um, after they've been pushed back to their chamber and sees an Alpha Legionnaire leader named Kitzel Carthage just sitting in his throne, thumbing through a copy of the Codex Astartes, just smirking to himself. <laughs> and then that's when Kitzel Carthage basically just reveals, oh yeah, by the way, we had hypnotized half of your recruits, so I'm going to get them to ki and he gets them to kill themselves right in front of him. Oh my God. And then he says, oh yeah, and then the guy's like, yeah, well, you're going to pay for this because our reinforcements are on the way. He's like, oh yeah, you mean those reinforcements we killed decades ago but have been broadcasting <laughs> fake reports from? Them, are they on the way? <laughs> Fuck off. And he's sitting there lounging in the guy's chair, thumbing through a copy of the Codex oh Astartes. Oh my God. Yeah, so yeah, man, you're absolutely man might right. As well go he man might a man might as well go fetch a fucking uh, uh what's those fucking things called for your feet a little share for your feet just <laughs> throw up his uh legs and just <laughs> grab a fucking mojito or something God. <laughs> fucking hell grab a cold one, yeah. Yeah. A cold one. <laughs> <laughs> oh that's fucking great oh, you know what like i'm ha i'm happy we're having uh this conversation because this is making me like actually like enjoy Alpha Legion, uh, the Alpha Legion more and more. But this is this is. I'm sorry, I got to interject. This is why I fucking hate the I am a Farius meme, and it's a really <laughs> bad example of saying I hate it because it involves. Yeah, it. yeah, yeah. But that, when you that, say fucking, I am Alpharius, <laughs> you f so overwhelmingly undersell how interesting yeah, Alpha Legion the Alpha is. Legion can yeah. be. That's true. <laughs> you know, I, I'm. I, I will actually concede uh, that. That's true. It's like, the, you know how Red gets fucking pissed off when you just turn up and say, oh, Night Lord's skinning people, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and then he has to break into a whole fucking spiel about how the Night Lord's omnibus actually explains that they're more than just that. You know, uh, it's, it's why the I am Elfaris meme is the worst fucking meme in 40k. <laughs> because of that fucking meme, we've got an entire legion of space marines who are just bottlenecked into this stupid-ass <laughs> stereotype. Jesus. <laughs> 
so. So that interaction just then was like the most Tom thing I think I've heard in a fucking while. <laughs> oh no, what, what do you, what do you was, mean? <laughs> that, that, was, that was Tom, sorry, it was Mooch saying like, oh yeah, this, I'm really happy about having this conversation. It's making me really enjoy the uh, Alpha Legion. Let me tell you why that and thing you like is bad. I hate the I am Alphaius meme. This is why I fucking hate Alpha Legion. <laughs> 100% positive to 0% fucking negative. I was like, huh? <laughs> this fucking 180 it. This is why I fucking hate Alpha Legion. Oh. No, I don't hate oh. the Alpha Legion. I hate the meme. <laughs> <laughs> it's total fucking script the flip meme. there. But I mean. You you guys heard it here first. Tom hates the Alpha Legion. Zero love. Hates you guys are trying hates. to make people think I think Coolsville sucks. They stole his hair. Shaking my fucking head. I hate the Alpha Legion about as much as I love Big Macs, but oh Christ, that's set in stone at all. <laughs> it's in his head. Oh, God. Fucking dickheads. I mean, you're I'm, I'm, I'm happy we managed to uh, help the viewers cross off two uh, bingo uh, <laughs> r- 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 once right there in a fucking span of 10 seconds. Good job, Tim. Good job. I, th- I think, <laughs> Fuck you, I think the bonus chrono bingo here is um, is Alpha Legion mentioned. <laughs> yeah. Alpha- <laughs> that's like, that's the me. That's like... <laughs> Fuck's sake. Oh, we, gotta, we gotta switch the bingo up uh, from time to time, otherwise it's gonna... <laughs> it's uh, too people, easy, man. Yeah, it's gonna be too easy. Oh, okay. Right, who's got another fucking excerpt? Get off the fucking Alpha Legion for I... I actually have another Alpha, Alpha Legion. Legion. I have another oh. Alpha Legion. No, 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 no. This is relevant. It's oh, relevant. Oh, oh, you have had your turn. It's relevant. It's you relevant to Tom. Back down there. You sit back down in your corner there. Yeah. Tom, wait, wait, Tom, Tom, it is relevant to what you just said. So I I I get right. slotted all right. here. All right, you, all right, you, all right, you have thirty faster. seconds. Fire. In that new book, Harrow Master, where it's ten thousand years later, and a lot of the Alpha Legionaries present are not. N- none of them are Heresy era because the Alpha Legion never fled into the Eye of Terror. You see, so they've been fighting for ten thousand <clears> years and replacing their losses and getting new ones. It's the explanation for why they've drifted so far from that we're loyal deep down and doing this for the Imperium to we're just straight up traitors. Now, when yeah. Solomon Akura brings together a bunch of alpha legionnaires of all different stripes all different war bands you know one of them is in the process of falling to corn some of them specialize yeah. in biological warfare some are penitents who actually line the insides of their helmets with barbed wire because they want to punish themselves for betraying mm-hmm. the emperor's great vision that sort of thing it's it's a motley band of alpha legionnaires of all different ideologies and stripes and methodologies yeah. sorry there's a truck horn outside um and it, you, you basically get <laughs> everyone and then they're all talking and then one group one guy stands up. He just looks like a normal Alpha Legionary like you would, like, you know, the Alpharius. And then yeah. he just he gets up and then to introduce himself, he says, I am Alpharius. And then everyone just jumps down his throat, like, just shut the fuck up. They're like, oh, oh, <laughs> yeah. oh it's Alpharius. <laughs> they're like, they're like, oh, you're hell. Alpharius? Wow, I gotta go tell Alpharius. Hey, Alpharius, look, it's Alpharius. <laughs> shut up. <laughs> everyone just jumps down the guy's throat and tells him to shut up. <laughs> no, you're fucking not Alpharius. Shut up. The ever- Even they're tired of it. Even, Even in canon, they're of it. pissed off with the meme. For fuck's sake! But but what if it was <laughs> Alpharius? No, oh, no, 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 the real one. <laughs> <laughs> that was him. That that was the guy. But no one believed it. <laughs> yeah, he, was, exactly. he wasn't lying that time. Hi- hiding in plain sight. It's the perfect strategy. <laughs> that was the real one. <laughs> I actually have a theory that if Alpharius ever comes back and introduces himself as such, it is I, I am Alpharius, I have returned. Half of the Legion just won't no one's half the Legion him. won't believe him and then he'll just be like, oh okay. No. <laughs> yeah, okay. Oh, okay. Like cried wolf kind that of would be the funniest shit in the world, and I want that to happen so bad. <laughs> Please God, let this be ha- let this happen. It would be so fucking funny. Fucking, I, I imagine this uh, Omegon or Alpharius, which one of them, f- those bald bastards died, and uh, yes. fucking just uh, comes back, it's like, my legion, I am Alpharius, and just goes, like, ah, fuck you, oh. old man, fuck you, you don't know what fuck you should fuck, fuck, get the fuck out of here. The future's now, and they, old man. And, 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 yeah, and, and he just future. super fucking exasperated, it's like, all right. Fuck this shit and just leave. <laughs> that would be the funniest thing in the world. Just a legion just not giving a shit that their Primarch has returned after 10,000 years. <laughs> he just hasn't returned. Just oh. don't care. It's, oh, Alpharius is back for the 200th time this century. Yeah. Thanks, Alpharius. Yeah. <laughs> 
I just realised the most on-topic thing in the world, by the way. We got fucking Alfari S and Omegon on the podcast with us today. Fucking audience, that was a bold joke. Uh, if you couldn't grasp, uh, it. Jesus yeah. Christ. <laughs> right? Someone give uh, me, a, give us an excerpt that takes us uh, off the fucking Alpha Legion before uh, I blow Aaron's okay. fucking brains out. I, I, I got, I got a good one. I I go go right out, man. A bit of a lengthy one. It's from the from the book Scars. People probably already know what it is if you if they know the law. I do. So, so the exit goes as as such. Um, uh, Sanguinius looked at the Khan thoughtfully. I thought you, of all of us, would feel joy for Horus. The Khan shrugged. He is the best of us. I begrudge him nothing and I have told him so. But it should have never happened. So it should have been you, asked Fulcrum, acerbically. Mortarion snorted again, but Sanguinius said nothing. I wouldn't have taken it, said the Khan. Of course you would have, said Fulcrum. The Khan shook his head. I have no use for another title. My people give me enough. <laughs> Sanguinius smiled. My brother, I think you are the most inscrutable of us all. I know what Rogel wants, and I know what Robute wants. But even after so long, I have no idea what you want. He wants to be left alone, said Fulgrim. To shoot off into the stars and hunt down Xenos <laughs> on those delightful jet bikes. They're devilishly fast. I heard from a uh, contact on Mars, Jagatai, that you do strange thing to your ships. The Khan shot him a heavy lidded stare. I heard you do strange things to your warriors. <laughs> <laughs> Fulgrim's slender face briefly flared of anger at Sanguinius' laugh. Jesus. <laughs> It continues for a bit, but I will leave it there. With that, no, 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 no. Do the bit at the end. Do the bit. I swear to God, finish it. I swear to God, it's uh, such a good one. It's yeah, so, yeah. it's so good. No, because the ending is just but, okay. Go on, go on. Yeah, but Sanguinius laughed. I wonder which one of you would win in the duel. The angel mused. <laughs> I would like to see that. You both handle a blade like gods. Name the place, brother. Fulgrim said to the Khan. I'd even travel to Dragoris if you built a palace to keep the dust from my armor. The Khan felt the insult. It stabbed at him deeply. But his expression never changed. They could never know, none of them, how much their close fraternity rankled him. You would lose, said the Khan. Fulgham grinned. But there was something fragile in it. You would lose because you would treat it like a game, like you treat everything. And I would not. You would lose because you know nothing of me, and I know everything of you, because you shout it from the turrets of your battle cruisers. <laughs> My prowess remains unknown. You have some reputation as a swordsman, brother, but I make no boast when I tell you I would leave you choking on it. <laughs> I fucking love this fucking this fucking little section, right? Jesus. Because this is this is the Khan through and through, right? Yeah. He it takes really is. he takes no shit. He he is super underestimated, not amongst the 40k <laughs> community or the audience. But amongst he's the underestimated a, 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 yeah, amongst the, the other Primarchs. And he oh, knows shit. he is. But, yeah. <laughs> Tom, do you know the stupidest fucking comparison I'm about to make? Oh no. But the the fuck around and find out factor that is the car. It is insane. <laughs> it is. <laughs> it reminds me so much of fucking. You don't know what you think. I don't know when it's gonna get this from fucking Musashi from Baki. Where he's, like, <laughs> and he's like, I'm still me. Do you see it? Do you see what I mean? <laughs> Oh, oh. The Khan is Musashi. That's actually quite funny. I like that. What? There's, like, there's going to be like, like one person listening to this podcast who knows what you're talking about. And it's just oh, we got our, we got our fucking we got our guy on the Patreon. I, f I forgot his name. Shit, he's gonna kill me. He used to have the Bucky p profile picture. The Bucky profile. But like you know the whole Musashi bit where he's like, you guys want to fight me with a sword, but I'm still Musashi. It's something the Khan would do. Yeah, like, I'm still yeah. the Khan. Still the Khan. <laughs> I, I'll still fuck you up with my fists. It's the same energy. <laughs> what what I. What I find funny is um, the fact that Fulgrim was more or less being nice here. Like, nobody ever really reaches out to the Khan or talks to him. But Fulgrim's like, nah, man, I get you. You want to be left alone. You want to hunt down Xenos on those on those cool bikes here. That's, that's pretty cool. And yeah. then the Khan just responds <laughs> by yelling a slur at him, basically. <laughs> nah, Fulgrim was being a petty bitch. I disagree. I think Fulgrim I was, feel like was he jamming, was, honestly. Here's the thing. I feel like Fulgrim was trying in his own way because Fulgrim is... He, he's pretty narcissistic and, and pretty self-absorbed. He's a very histrionic mm. person. So you could understand why someone like that would say something that might rub someone the wrong way because this is someone who's not sure, used yeah. to really considering how his actions might affect other people or when he's going overboard because he's just used to saying whatever and being praised for it. But I feel like he was kind of trying to reach out a little bit and then he just gets shut down 
by having a slur yelled at him, and and Ferris Manus does the same thing to Lorgar. <laughs> Oh no! I, I, Is that I, the I'm... consequences of my actions? <laughs> oh, fucking! I, 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 I think I, I think I agree with you there, Chrono. Because I mean, obviously it's hard to read. Obviously, yeah, yeah. We, we as readers know that Fulgrim is a narcissistic piece of shit. But it's. It it he is after all still their brothers. He's still I mean even if he's trying to be even if he's being a bit of a cunt. He's still being like trying to make conversation. It, it's it's another way. I see it. I, I buy it. You know. Mm-hmm. I mean it's I uh, find... sp- speaking of being uh, no sorry continue. What are you gonna say? Sorry, I just find it funny um, from my point of view who doesn't know a super in depth amount of Horace Heresy law. Um, Fulgrim does like one big thing at the start where fucking he kills. Um, uh, your boy Ferris, and then after that, it's just a series of him getting humbled, almost. Yeah. Oh yeah. Well, yeah. To be fair, like, very much so. Cataclysmically. To be fair, yeah. until <laughs> until right at the end, with Gilliman, <laughs> and then yeah. Fulgrim, that's like his, Fulgrim puts Gilliman in the perma sleep. That's like his first and only win, and I think even worse is Mortarion in that regard because yeah. And, well, he I, he kind oh, of fucks Perturabo quite heavily as well. Yeah, but to like, be it, fair, it doesn't it, it doesn't mm. work though. That's more of a Perturabo centric book because Perturabo is able to pull the win. He, yeah, he, he manages to pull his way back from that and then hit him with a hammer. And then let's not forget, it doesn't matter what he did to him because we got <laughs> well, I'm the one holding the hammer. That's what everyone goes to. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Moots, <laughs> yeah. you would know. Well, yeah. well, I would know. I would know. And and actually speaking <laughs> of that specifically, because I was thinking. Uh, speaking of Fulgrim and getting humbled, I was just thinking of the uh, excerpt uh, or the bit where uh, Perturabo reveals that he can both speak uh, Eldar and Orc. Oh. Yeah, and, uh, bo- both and Benharic, uh, yeah. Uh, the, the the Eldar in uh, in Angel Exterminatus and both uh, the Eldar and Fulgrim are like are like wow, very cool and. Uh, Portrobo obviously is being very <laughs> smug about it, and uh, then and Fulgrim uh, laughs and said, "You are a wonder to me, brother. I had not known you possessed a talent for linguistics." And Portrobo, in his uh, dry <laughs> way, answers, "I spent my life at the business end of a siege, digging trenches and raising cities. So it's easy for you to forget. I have a mind as engineered as any of our brothers." I may not have the warp lore of Mag- Magnus or the Warcraft of Horus, but being underestimated is one of my greatest weapons. To which Fulgrim then says, I shall never make that mistake. He proceeds to make and that Perturabo, mistake. And of course, says, <laughs> no, I think you will. He proceeds <laughs> to make that mistake. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> one, thing I, one thing that stuck to me about that scene is the fact that, like, it, I, when I read it, I found it really funny because... Um, it's not. He starts speaking in Eldari, and then no one's that shocked. They're like, oh, you speak Eldari? That's cool. And he's like, yeah, I speak Eldari and Benharic and Orkish. But you didn't think that because nobody thinks anything of me because all of you underestimate me. No. Nobody said anything. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck off. Nobody Stop said crying. anything. You just and he just starts flying off. <laughs> Like, no, yeah. up the rails. and then he proceeds to fucking introduce fulgrim to uh the to the table and uh, yeah. <laughs> table and to his face the table makeout session <laughs> yeah. introduce him to the five finger death punch the godly hand smack God, the godly hand smack the, the god smack the fucking the god smack, rem- yeah. the god smack. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so th- there's there's one I want to quickly burn through and uh, super fast, right? I'm I'm, I'm, I'm mm-hmm. just gonna paraphrase it, right? Uh, this is the one that I didn't actually write down which book it was from, but basically it was after the um the drop site massacre when Corvus is basically making his way back to Terra, and he he's in orbit, he's basically in orbit of Terra, and he wants to land and speak with the Emperor. Deliverance lost. Mm-hmm. And <laughs> thank you. And a. A, a contingent of Imperial Fists basically stop his ship and say, listen, prepare to be fucking boarded. We, we we don't trust you. You know, we need to board you. If you try and fucking do anything, we'll fucking kill you. And his, his one of his lieutenants or one of his marines basically responds saying, shut the fuck up. There's a Primarch on this ship. What the fuck are you doing? <laughs> and the, the Imperial Fist guy basically doubles down and is like, no, you shut the fuck up. You're going to be boarded or you're going to die. God. And then, and then, uh, and then, Corvus takes the mic and says, "says Hi, I am I am Corvus Corax, yada yada yada, all the titles. Don't worry, come aboard. It's okay." And his and his his lieutenant on the mic says, "Sire, why did you do that? 
<laughs> he's a moron. Why did you do that? And Corvus is like, he's an imperial fist. He can't fucking help it. <laughs> 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 I just fucking love that. It's, <laughs> this, this, body, this is basically Jesus. when your dad tells you to, to to shut up and just put up with that one cousin you, that's that you yeah, don't like. Shut up and be nice to your weird cousin. <laughs> <laughs> that is quite literally what's happening here. <laughs> oh, my son, unfor- this is an unfortunate side effect of my brother. Just accept yeah. them the way they are. <laughs> <laughs> just, just, just live with it. They're a bit slower than normal. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, yeah. love uh, I, I, I love Corvus. I love Corvus. I love Corvus. He is probably, I would say Corvus, uh, Cor- Corvus, Corvus and the Raven Guard are the most overlooked and forgotten Legion and Primarch because, you know, the White Scars have been getting a lot more love lately <laughs> because, you know, based Mongolia meme and, yeah. and and the Chris Wraith books were just mm-hmm. really, really good. I like I don't think I've I I have not disliked a single thing Chris Wraith has written. So he's done the White Scars a lot of justice and made them very interesting and made some very good characters like Shiban Khan. I absolutely love and he made the Khan very interesting. Mm-hmm. The White Scars are basically his brainchild at this point. Um, oh yeah, for sure. And then all the other for legions, sure. you know, they have demon primarchs, and you know, the, um, the legions that do a lot of things and stuff. And then people remember the Iron Hands by dint of having not done a lot and having their primarch die first. But in in yeah. that rush to remember the Iron Hands as the one who are most forgotten, it's the Raven Guard and Korax who end up the most forgotten. The only thing anyone remembers Korax for is the fact that he's hunting Lorgar. That's it. Like that. Look, yeah. That's the only thing, and that's a shame. It, it's it's funny. You st- it's funny you say that. My fucking main 40k army is Death Guard, who just consistently get fucked and forgotten about. And my main heresy army choice is Raven Guard, who just get forgotten about. <laughs> so it's just fucking sad. Uh, <laughs> well, sp- speaking of uh, the, um, uh, sorry, the uh, 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 Raven Guard, another funny bit uh, for lore bit is the whole uh, when uh, the Tau when they're they're fighting the Tau. And I can't remember oh, exactly oh, who it is. The, the Tau managed to kill their chapter master. Yeah. <laughs> and the Tau, super proud of themselves, announced, We have killed your uh, fucking emperor of mankind. They killed up. the emperor, like the king of all <laughs> no, space marines. So I can give a little it's bit more. It's funny, on that. that would have been uh, a big. Fl- killing a chapter master is hard. That is catastrophic. Yeah. That is a big flex, but they mm. still managed to look stupid because they thought they killed the emperor. It <laughs> undercut everything. Yeah. No, no, that's so much funnier on so many different levels because that whole bit is the Raven, obviously Raven Garden Tau. It's fucking Shadow Sun swaps places because obviously they the Tau know they're being followed or hunted by the Raven Guard. But since Tau stealth stuff is re- is much better than the Imperiums, Shadow Sun's like right. She swaps her fucking suits, so her prototype one, which gets blasted, is a normal Tau guy in it, and she's in a fucking ghost keel. Mm. And so they blow up the the commander suit, thinking, oh yeah, we just killed the fucking Tau commander. <laughs> she pops up, blows the chapter master to bits, and then they're her. <laughs> One of the greatest minds of the Tau Imperium is like, yes, we killed the Emperor. <laughs> so it's even at like that level of um, like leadership in Tau, where it's like, oh, we fucking did it, boy. <laughs> <We're back." laughs> Hell yeah! <laughs> right. Bring out the party. And hats. even she was like, fucking, but <laughs> beno- to the fact that was the fucking one of the Legion fucking chapter masters. Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> <It's levels. laughs> oh. So fucking stupid. It's great. God. It's great. <laughs> oh my goodness! And then we got fucking Shrike in his silly fucking foot uh, foot claw armor. <laughs> foot claw armor. That 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 deserves its own silly lore. <laughs> in yeah. my opinion, I want I want to know the fucking like R and D development for that. Going, he needs this. Yeah. This fucking guy, he needs these things. <gasps> oh, you're also forgetting his haircut. <laughs> Wait, who's next? Okay. We don't talk about Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That, oh. If you're a smart person, you put the Primaris beaky helmet from his hip onto his head. God. <laughs> <laughs> I, I like that the Raven Guards still That's exclusively we... use the beaky helmet. Because they have yeah. to. Because, like, it would be a sin not to. <laughs> it, it's Anytime I think about Space Marine helmets, I just uh, think back at a meme I saw. Like, oh, if you if you know him, what what's his favorite helmet? Uh, 
And uh, <laughs> <laughs> and I just always go, Hound School, yeah, <laughs> Beakies. <God. laughs> <laughs> the fact that and the fact that orcs ten thousand years later still use that as the identifier for space marines. Beakies. Yeah. It's <laughs> it's great. It's great. Umies. <laughs> the beakies. Well, sp- Speaking of orcs, I actually have a uh, excerpt right here, or uh, an example of uh, some funny lore that I uh, that, that I managed to uh, find again. It's uh, the from the book a "Brutal and uh, Brutal Cunning," uh, and oh. it's the bu- bit where <laughs> an orc, uh, a grot, and a squig manage to. <laughs> disable a warlord I know this one after driving after yeah. driving a bu- fucking buggy into it and so they're, so <laughs> so they're in the cockpit and it's like the the reason even why the squig uh, uh, is there because is because it's trying to eat the grot cool. <laughs> and uh, so <laughs> this is a um this is like a fucking a dog, a fox, and a chicken in a boat situation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Basically. But all, what, so, like, so how the fuck did the buggy end up in the in the thing? Did they just ramp it with the fucking bow, 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 play and, and hit the fucking titan? Yeah, they, 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 just, they just ramp, they use something as a ramp, I can't remember exactly, and they just go right into it, and... Uh, uh, it's. I mean, b- basically, what happens then is that they're in the cockpit. The and the uh, the orc. Um, uh, what's his face now again? Uh, Uftak uh, finds the squig uh, like happily munching down on uh, a uh, tech priest, uh, and <laughs> and uh, he uh, looks up and like he sees his glyph. Uh, of uh, whatever Hume was there, uh, and uh, it, he can't really read it. Uh, and it's like for us, we know it. Like it says Princept, Princeps. but he looks at it, he's like Princess, Princess, and and he just he he and therefore after that he just names the squig princess. God. Ball named Cupcake, Squig named Princess. It's literally that. It's the same thing. <laughs> it's like, you want the name of you you're killed? You will be Princess. Yeah. <laughs> God and the Squig it. just grunts happily, like with blood all over its face. It's like, yeah! yeah. <laughs> I really need to read some orc books, honestly. Oh, they're great, man. They're great. Who's... I want to listen to the audio book, because I think... I think it is through Brutal and Cunning, so yeah, like, yeah. halfway through a page, the narrator just gets fucking killed by an orc, and they start <laughs> taking over as narrators. <laughs> yeah, that's fucking true. You're kidding. Oh my you god. Hear, you just hear like a loud like, rustling. It's like, oh, 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 oh. <laughs> <laughs> you just fucking hacked. You hear a squish noise, I think, oh is what god. fucking happens. That's, that's great. <laughs> that's, yeah, that's it's true. Like, it's what what, what more could you fucking ask for? Uh, who, oh who's next god. out of curiosity? <laughs> It's a. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. I think, it swung, I think it swung back around to me. All right. I think so. I yeah. think so. Yeah. Tell you what, a bit. Do I have. I might have one last quick one. Just let me check. Uh, but yeah, no, I, I do. I, think, but... I do. I had one in honor of Red. Oh, boy. Oh, okay. Uh, okay. And it's, it's funny in the sense that if you love Night Lords, this is funny. If you're a Night Lord fan, this is funny. If you're not a Night Lord fan, this will probably miss you. But if like if the Night Lords are your favorite legion, which we found out is quite a few people, this probably will get you. Yeah. Can, so, I, can I just get some... Uh, I'm just going to get some closing people. words on the uh, orc thing. Oh, yeah, first, yeah. That's yeah, 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 yeah. What, what, what I really love about the orcs is that for anyone who reads those kinds of books, it, it has a lot of Terry Pratchett shenanigans <laughs> to it. <laughs> yeah, it does. It's, it's just so all over the place. And it's... I mean, as an outside perspective, from a, from as a reader perspective, you know, orcs are funny, they're silly, and all of that. But I mean, e- and even in their own books, they appear to be monstrous and whatnot. Yeah. But it's it, it's just that great, silly, fucking discworld shenanigans that I just absolutely love yeah, about orcs. Absolutely. What I, I like to compare to it is um like Black Adder, but every character is bald. Yeah. Every character is Baldrick. <laughs> <laughs> What's funny about orc books as well? Is anytime it's not an orc perspective, 
it's just other fucking people from the Imperium going, what the fuck is this? What the fuck <laughs> what is that? that? <laughs> what is going on? It's just horror. It's, it's almost horror. When, yeah. when it's not from the perspective of the orcs, it's just yeah. pure horror and brutality. Yeah. Exactly. And funnily enough, I have an excerpt that relates to orc stuff, but it's it's from the perspective of an iron warrior, but like I'm not going to cut in so Tom, yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> All right, I'll, I'll speed through this quickly. I'll speed through I'll speed through this quickly. So, I think this is from Prince of Crows, but I could be wrong. So, Conrad Kurz in in reference to how he does things, right? Into what he is and how he, you know, he says there is no other way or there was no other way. And Sevatar says, "No. What others did you try?" And, and, and Conrad's just like, grrr. And Sevatar's like, answer me, father. What politics of peace did you teach? What scientific and social illumination did you bring to this society in your quest for human utopia? What other ways did you try beyond eating the flesh of dogs and skinning people alive? And and uh, fucking Conrad's like, it was the only way. And Sevatar's like, the only way to do what? The only way to bring a population to heal? Then how did the other Primarchs manage it? How was this? How was this? It's... He just can't get a straight answer out of him. He's just done. He's just done. And you and I think Sevatar is one of only like, like three Night Lords that Kurz actually respects. And this guy's going to Kurz like your dad. What the, what the fuck are you doing? Da- what was the plan? <laughs> what, the f- the- what the fuck is wrong with you? The- 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 I saw someone <laughs> you know? once say online somewhere, it was a Tumblr post, that like Sevatar does it really, and <laughs> Sevatar will do some really insane out there shit, but he views himself as probably incredibly, he views himself as very sane and probably the most sane person in the entire Night Lord's Legion, but his entire reference for mental health is Conrad Kurz. Yeah. So like that's like, not an amazing uh, bar. Like- and like that's that's funny. It's like it, Conrad has this moment of we I've tried nothing and I'm already out of idea and I'm so already out of ideas. Yeah. Like <laughs> God. But I'm much you might see this, but it's a very um and I, and I'm, not, I'm not just saying this, it's very like Black and Son style relationship Blark where the mental son. health is in the fucking lows. Blark. But he's only got a god awful person to refer himself to and it's like hmm, <laughs> fuck for fuck's sake. <laughs> but um, the figure seven time then it made me laugh because like, he's just walking in and it's like I've had it I've had it up to here with this bullshit man <laughs> we've tried for so long I, I imagine Conrad coming into Savitar's room like son <laughs> son <laughs> so he just comes with the fucking roof upside down or something <laughs> swings like, down from the rafters <laughs> And, and the, 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 one of the most common memes I've seen of Blark and Son is a 40k one, where it's that moment of like, he's in the walls. He's in the goddamn walls! And it's, it, it's Lionel Johnson chasing Conrad Kurth through the Invincible Reason. He's in the walls! It's great. And, and it's, it's funny, is... We literally never find out what happened to, to Sevatar. Like, we never find out what happened to him. No. And that's... For all we know, he's still in jail. <laughs> like, he's still so... <laughs> <laughs> Poor bastard. It, but, like... <laughs> Did, didn't he get, get the Noxus crown? Which uh, apparently is, like, theorized to house the soul of Conrad or something. thing is, like... Well, no. Be- no, what? he couldn't have. Because mm-hmm. Conrad died after the heresy was over. But Sevatar has been in jail. Uh, he, Sevatar never got out of jail partway through the heresy. No, I'm, pro- I'm probably thinking of someone else. I, I don't. You are. Uh, okay. Gotta be careful about stepping in Night Lord territory, or else Red's not here. It's a recipe to get fucking killed as soon as it's <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. That's, that's true. That's true. <laughs> so you got the fucking remembrance, sir. We'll get anyone. <laughs> <laughs> Here, here's um, so so. We just toss, we just toss someone from our dungeons in front of him, and it'll be fine. We'll just uh, give him a bit of flaying. It's fine. It's fine. <laughs> It was quite funny, actually. We were talking to him after the episode. Um, we, we were talking about Sevatar and like, the Primarch tier list or something like that. Um, no, it wasn't tier list. It was one of the ones where Sever- uh, Cornard mentioned. He was like, you fuckers only talked about surface level knowledge of Night Lords. <laughs> I was like, yeah, that's all most people know. Yeah. <laughs> but that was, that, was, no, that was Red's response to the Arthur episode. 
God. Ah. That was obvious. Yeah, was, yeah, was, yes, yeah, yeah. yes. It's uh, my <laughs> bad. I, tr- I tried to represent the red. I failed. <laughs> I tried. Tell me what toe-to-toe with me about the Alpha Legion. We'll see what happens. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Step I believe his exact words were, that was the most milk toast example of Conrad knowledge. <laughs> <laughs> I think was what, I think that's what he's saying. No one here has read the Omnibus. The Omnibus. <laughs> Bruh, what, yeah. did you, what did you expect? Got better things to read. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Oof. You, 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 I'm calling it right now. As soon as he hears this, you're getting a DM saying you don't even know how to read. That's what you're getting. <laughs> yeah. You assume he watches our content. He does. I, I know. Oh, he does. I know he does. He does. Oh, does he? I yeah. know he does. You'll get. You, you're getting a brutal, a brutal text. I know we all. Are. Nobody knock him out. Nobody <laughs> knock him out. <laughs> <laughs> so oh yeah okay so who's uh who's next i think we've gone uh most of the round uh way around tom do you have anything else for us no you want to you want to bring it to a close now mate i i have i right. i have i got one more I'll, I'll end it off here um i actually have a few um Oh no! Well, <laughs> one more turns into a few. It's like a hydra. <laughs> <fucking pump. laughs> okay, here's the thing. It, it's it's generally chaos space marines in general. I think tend to be funnier than loyalists because after mm-hmm. ten thousand years of fighting, you get this dark, dry, sardonic sense of humor. Because it's car I, I car totally screaming past. Sorry for one. Oh, yeah, car, car was screaming past. So no, I totally agree with you for one main reason, and that's. Chaos, for some reason, in my, it just popped into my head. I believe are the only people who canonically say cunt in a bad situation. Wait, really? <laughs> and that I've makes nev- me I've very fucking never happy seen to that. think about. That, I agree. <laughs> Here's the thing. Here's the thing. <laughs> Is like, it's because a lot of Chaos Space Marines are just fighting, not for any like sense of loyalty, but it's because they have nothing better to do. So they're more willing to just dick around. Like, there's this one funny moment where mm-hmm. it was, it's in the, um, it's, I think, in an, ang- it's, in, it's in a, uh, uh, it's in an Angron book where like, that one, uh, like, one guy is talking, like, hey, do, one world leader is talking to another. He's like, hey, do we have an apothecary? He's like, no, you killed him, remember? Oh, no, yeah, we fought to first blood. And then he's like, you <laughs> decapitated him. He's like, it was a lot of first blood. <laughs> but, like, that's not what I'm talking about. <laughs> what, what, what the moment here is, is, um, the moment here is, like, it's, um, it's an Iron Warriors thing, because we were talking about orc tech. What happens is, um, an Iron Warrior eats the brain of an orc to gain knowledge on how to fly, uh, um, his, his, his plane. So, it goes like this. Gamori brought his foot smashing down on the other pedal, but it simply flopped limply against the floor. He turned and looked at Rodan. That should have been the break, he reported. It seems the pilot took it upon itself to disable it. The orc didn't want to appear timid <laughs> to its fellows. He elaborated as some of the alien's memories stirred in his mind. Rodan felt his heart's ha- <laughs> Rodan felt his heart's hammer in his breast. How do we land without breaks, he demanded. Again, Gamori focused upon the mental images from the orc's brain. We crash. Was his far from encouraging response? <laughs> no, 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 we about, we about to crash. Oh. Let, let, let me consult the, ma- let the me memories. Consult the man- no, let me don't. consult the manual. We don't. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Interesting. Oh. I ate the manual. Iron Warriors um. and Vehicles is just really funny because there's another moment from the new book, like it's dark from um, Dark Imperium, where. An iron warrior is faced for uh, for the first time with um, Primaris Marines, specifically repulsor grav tanks. Here, three repulsor grav mm. tanks fell from the sky like stones, decelerating rapidly and coming to a gentle halt a couple of meters above the ground, right by the flanking iron warriors. Their pulsing aggressive grab impellers knock a, knocked the trader sideways. One of the iron warriors yanked a melta bomb from his side and dove under the tank seeking to attach the charge and destroy the Primaris armor. Oh, the, I know this! The oh. traitor had yeah, evidently never faced a repulsor before. The tank's pounding mm-hmm. grav engine squashed him flat, leaving a silver... <laughs> leaving a silver, blurred human outline pressed into the ground, leaking blood. <laughs> <laughs> it's not even that it crushed him, it wily coyoted him into the ground. It leaves a perfect outline of him yeah. just pressed into the ground. Just, just, he just di- he, sl- oh, he slides under to blow the thing up like a badass and just. <laughs> just <laughs> pressed to me, Brian. Ground. Fucking grab plates on the side. I fucking oh, love, love the idea of this guy going like, hell yeah, I'm gonna fuck these guys up. I'm gonna do good. I'm gonna place this fucking thing and it just 
fucking I, 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 I like to think he, I like to think he yelled something before. I'm like, hang on, I got this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I got this. Kobe. <laughs> Yo. <laughs> so. Um. And okay, if if I could just speed run the ones I have here. Uh, it, it, are we are we ending right now? Okay. It, uh, no. Go, okay. Does anyone have ahead. any more? I do have one. Okay, go ahead. Because I have another okay, one of a vehicle. So, so, so this is uh, one of my favorite uh, orc. Uh, one of my favorite orcs uh, in the lore. Uh, it's an orc called Talker. Uh, he's a mad boy, uh, and for some reason, something seems like uh, he seems to be wired in a completely different way. Bros built compared different. to the other orcs. <laughs> as, as as with this um as with this following quote <clears throat> so there it starts with a uh, this orc mech called uh snickob there we go got a few of you from up here now look at that them red boys there they don't look like humies look more like tin boys but they is humies just like loads of bionics <laughs> them is humie mech boys they believe all sorts of weird stuff <laughs> <laughs> and Talker responds with Cultural collapse and reorientation of belief systems in the aftermath of Renaissance can provoke magical thinking in previously <laughs> rational beings. Yeah, I read that. <laughs> oh, wait, is this the same fucking guy? Who wait, wait, finish, got, uh, finish the quote. And, like and, and Snickbob continues with What the zog are you talking about? <laughs> to which Talker responds Beats me. <laughs> <laughs> he just, he will literally, yeah, I've, heard, I've read about him before. He just mentally phases out of the fourth wall every now and again. Yeah. Well, he, he's still got uh, a Crork program, Crork right? Program. He's still. Uh... <laughs> Bro accidentally got rebooted like, to factory settings for a second guy. there. Yeah. Bro booted in startup mode. <laughs> Isn't this the same guy who, like, was talking to a mech at some point, and he talked about him how to, like, perfectly fix some sort of, like, flux engine or gravity engine, and the guy was like, shit, he's right. He's, like, not happy about it. Uh, <laughs> might be the same fucking weird thing. I think it is. Uh, Talker is a wonderful orc. He's, uh, <laughs> if you get the chance to read, I, I can't uh, remember exactly the title of the book here, but it's uh, it's wonderful. I think I, I think it was a shorter one, but yeah, that's great. Yeah. <laughs> like we've been talking a lot about space brains because I feel like if we wanted to go with orcs, like it could probably just make its own video. Uh Engine of Mork. Is Engine what it's of Mork, called. yeah. Nice. Mm. Oh, wait, I've got a very small okay. one. Just mm -hmm. quickly, because it because it is quite I got three fun. short ones it's to bang from, out, um... But like that we can just end it <laughs> off with that, yeah. <laughs> Well, what's the fuck? It's from uh, the audiobooks. It's exclusively audiobook called The Iron Devil, which is basically about a bunch of guardsmen on a planet post orc invasion. And it's like a desert world, and they find sort of shelter in this really like, it's abandoned Mechanicum sort of structure underground. And they find this really batshit fucking um, tech priest down there. And he's like, oh, yeah, I'll help you guys send out a SOS message if you help me with one small favor. And they were like, yeah, sure, what is it? It's like uh, half, a, half a fucking platoon of guardsmen, I think. So it's like 20 guys. Uh, he's like, yeah, I've got like, an orc downstairs and he's a kill. He's causing me some issues. And they were like, yeah, sure, one orc, that's fine. Go downstairs. Things in a fucking Morkonaut going around. <laughs> um, yeah. And in the audio book, it's great because all it is, the only audio for this guy is just in this like robotic voice going, Morka, 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 going around. And it's, and it's like, yes. Uh, <laughs> you said one orc. You get just, one orc. <laughs> and literally, they, a couple of them die in the first interaction. They go back to him and they go, like, what the fuck, man? And he's like, yeah, it's one orc. <laughs> it's one orc. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> Like, what's up? All right, let's close. Let, let's close it up with a last one from Chrono, okay. and then let's see about bringing this to a close. Okay. Speed run here. Um, okay, is it just one, or can I do all three quickly? I do one. Do okay, one. just do one. Okay, then I will cut out the other two and focus. And let's end it off with none other than your boy Caiaphas Kane. <laughs> yeah, needed, here we this go. This video would not have been complete without a Caiaphas <laughs> yeah. Kane. Um, he is actually defusing a bomb in this scene. Uh, so you know it's funny. Um, here, I need you. He's on the phone with. A, he's basically on the phone with a tech priest. 
<laughs> so who's telling him how to defuse a bomb. Okay. I need you to tell me how to deactivate it. <laughs> For an instant, I found myself wondering if the fault would give me enough time to get clear after all. But logic overrode the impulse to flee with the stark truth that doing so would just get me far enough for my shredded corpse to be entombed under most of the building when it collapsed. <laughs> the mysteries of the machine god cannot be lightly revealed to the unconsecrated. Ecumenides droned. I gritted my teeth. Unless you want to explain that to him in person in less than a minute, that's precisely what you're going to have to do, I told him. Because if I can't defuse the bloody bomb, I'm going to use the last few seconds of my life to organize a firing squad. <laughs> and, then just says, and, the, and then the tech priest says, how's the, and the tech priest just pauses. So how's the timer powered? <laughs> he got right through to him. The last thing I do will be to organize your firing squad if you don't tell me how to defuse this fucking bomb. And, oh. and for the, another moment from this is he tells him, you have to cut the red wire. And then Kane just yells at him, they're all purple. <laughs> like it is a shit show from start to finish. I don't know what book that's from because I just know I just found the excerpt. That's it. It, it wasn't cited to a book. No, I think it's I think it's no. um something uh, with honor. Like, let me see. Mm, someone someone in the comments with vaster and deeper knowledge than us will have to um, correct us and tell us where that's from. Please, I haven't actually read a Kai Viscane book. I just know the excerpt. Yeah, there, I've said read a couple of them as well. I haven't read the books. I've only read some excerpts. They're, they're fucking yeah, awesome. Like, really? But I'm glad we got to end off so, with that. Yeah, yeah. No, it, that's mm. a, it's a great ending there. And I think this is perfectly wraps up the episode. And I mean... Uh, now that, uh, please, everyone in the comment, tell us uh, what your favorite uh, funny moment in uh, the any of the 40k lore is. We would love to see what uh, you have to say. Humor is subjective, after all. Um, Unless I disagree and, with you. And of course, of course. Mm, mm. Funny, I man. am the funny. <laughs> You're just short and bold. I... So, well, and Yet. I mean... Well, Red isn't here, so I don't think anyone of us getting flayed. Um, but, mm. yeah, yeah. Uh, wait, wait, I think I heard some sound coming from the, the ventilation shaft. Oh, uh, no. Wait, I can hear him. I can hear his, his laughter. Everyone, run, run, run away, run! Ah! Thank you for making it to the end of this wonderful episode with Chrono the Harlequin. If you're enjoying our content and want to see more, please consider liking and subscribing this video. And if you want to interact with myself or any of the other members of the team, please consider joining our Discord. And if you want to support us, please consider taking a quick look at our Patreon. And you may get the chance to find yourself on the wall like these lovely people behind me now. And if you hang on a little bit longer, we're going to be answering some Patreon questions today. Thank you. See you next time. Right, so for the Patreon question this uh, week, this episode, we have a question from Bulby the Lone Marine, who oh asks, boy. Do any of you guys play Magic the Gathering or enjoy other tabletop games aside from Warhammer? I don't, and, I don't uh, play any mama. tabletop games. Okay. I don't even play 40k. <laughs> <laughs> sure. Let, let's let's take it from the start. Um, Does, he's a uh, pony. Tom, he's a big fat count? pony. Tom, do you want to start? And this chess yes, count. Does, does, uh... No, I don't actually. No, I think <laughs> <Jesus>. <laughs> games, I exclusively play 40k and Kill Team and all the you know those, those are the Warhammer games. I've played Warcry, but again, still Warhammer. Um, there, there's there's a bunch of games that have been floating around for a couple of years that I've wanted to try, but nothing I've actually ever gone out of my way to try. I think the biggest thing in my mind at the moment that I really want to give a go is the Deep Rock Galactic tabletop game. The Deep Rock Galactic board game where you have to paint up miniatures, you got to play them that way. The, the miniatures look fucking amazing. Uh, possibly the um, mm. Darkest Dungeon Ooh. tabletop game as well, or board game again. Uh, it looks... <laughs> uh, but 40K. those ones, those ones. Forty K. If, if but, GW gave know, a shit about Voltar, uh, apart as far as like <laughs> card games go, <laughs> it's not tabletop. I played Hearthstone Sorry for a couple of years, um, but you know, I've played Magic like two or three times. It's fine. 
I'm going to get shot for saying that, aren't I? Yeah, me too. Me too. The, 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 me too. The two of them are in the fucking call with us. I've got some friends we're, who are real. Uh, I, I will, I will hand over to somebody else at that, on that note. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, Kronos, please go ahead. Uh, talk a bit of your, your experience as well. Well, I would I would say I would say I agree with Tom and that I like to play chess, but in reality, I I haven't I haven't wanted to get into chess until they drop the next update. So you know, I'm I'm kind of waiting for that. <laughs> I'm waiting for the next edition. Chess two. Chess two. two. <laughs> it's, it's, well, it, I don't I don't well, I don't I don't like the horde meta that they have with pawns. <laughs> I want them to streamline the experience, <laughs> which is ironic because chess was invented in India, <laughs> which is where I'm from. <laughs> So like, I'm just I'm waiting by the dev I'm just waiting outside of the dev's house for um for... it's what, me reading what, what, the ancient think... literature. Wow, the dev notes suck. <laughs> it's like ancient <laughs> Sanskrit what, what literature. I... But um, I will say I don't actually play any tabletop games, but I want to recommend one that I think is cool and that I want to get into. That being a small game called Mal. Well, it's it's smallish. It's called Malifo by Weird Games, and the setting is hmm. so cool because. You basically have cowboys fighting demons and the police and necromancers fighting scientists and fighting, um, okay, well, basically the lore of the game is insane because humanity found a portal to another realm where they could effectively get what were basically Eldari soul stones and use them to power things. So the economy became based off these soul stones um, oh. As batteries, <laughs> as methods of power, as everything. Basically, everything in the world that you use a battery for, you were they were using soul stones. But then one day, okay. the rift closed. And then the, the rift closed. It just shut randomly. And the people in there got trapped in there. And then only one thing came back out of the portal. That being a torso with no limbs or head and one word carved on the chest. Ours. Mm. That being from the natives of the realm called the Neverborn. <laughs> And then eventually, though, so what happened was society basically fucking collapsed. It was basically like if all the oil on Earth just ran dry. So everyone started fighting for the remaining, um, everyone in this cowboy world started fighting for the remaining soul stones. However, they did realize you can recharge them. You can't get more, but you can keep charging mm. them. But they require the energy of death. So giant charging stations appeared next to hospitals and morgues and graveyards where you can charge your batteries <laughs> when somebody dies. <laughs> it's fucking morbid, but it kept society running. Insane. Yeah. And then oh, this sounds fun. And then eventually well, and then eventually the the portal did open up again. So the the mining operations have begun. So you've got outlaws, you've got the guild which monitors things. They're basically kind of like frontiersmen police. You've got researchers, you've got triads called the 10 Thunders, and you have the Neverborn, and then you have the Resurrectionists which are criminal necromancers and other factions like there's hillbilly goblins who are in there all there's magicians there's um again triads it, the the model range so, is absolutely so where do insane you, where do you find this game it's available at a lot What's, what was it called malifo m-a-l-i-f-a-u-x it's very cheap to get into because again the models are cheap and you don't need many you only need like all it's right. a skirmish game Think of it more well, like that, think of it more like um like kill, like kill team. team. You have a small playing right. field well, and you get a little western terrain, you get a handful of characters, and things are done by drawing cards flip, and flipping coins. So it's it's a little more varied than just rolling hmm. dice. There's there's there you can find some playthroughs of it um online. But again, it does not get nearly enough love it deserves for how cool the setting is. And I think that's a damn shame. Well, Glad, no, glad, we, glad we could do a little bit of plugging for that yeah. then. Uh, and uh, to, to sort of wrap, uh, uh, I, I think the chess 2 you're looking for is 5D chess with multiverse time travel. <laughs> yeah. If, uh, if, if anyone is, uh, knows what it is, or if you don't know what it is, go, go check out the Steam reviews. That's all I'm saying. Uh, it speaks for itself. There's also four-way uh, chess. And, and now, uh, Aaron, what, what, are, what do you play? What do I play? Um, I used to be a lot more um, into it. I used to play a different game called, what the fuck was it called? It was called Vanguard before Magic, which was another card game style thing back in secondary school. That's why I got into like other games and Warhammer sort of thing. 
and then I got into Magic from that because it was just more popular in the area. And I was playing back from like Khans of Tarkir, and then I quit roundabout after Origins. And now I'm back into it thanks to the fucking Swedish bastard who's <laughs> chatting with me now. Um, exclusively playing Commander. Hmm. But other than that, uh, no, not really. I played the odd board game here and there, but nothing like consistent other than just, um, Warhammer and Magic. Mainly just uh, like actual video gaming other than that, really. Nice. Well, <laughs> nothing too flushed out. And, um, <laughs> and I. As previously mentioned, uh, play a lot of Magic: The Gathering, mainly Commander. I, I I really like Commander. It's one of my, it's probably my favorite uh, Magic: The Gathering format. Uh, mm. And uh, I'm so happy that I got uh, Aaron back into it. Uh, next up, it seems like I'm gonna get Tom into it. And uh, if I'm still alive by that <laughs> uh, time, maybe Red. But even I, I don't think I, I think he's mentioned before that he wouldn't really enjoy it. But who knows? Who knows? I can always try. Uh, uh, other than that, good boy, I play a lot of tabletop games when I get the chance. It's one of my favorite things to do. I play, I've nice. played everything oh, I from to mention fucking Five D&D. Minute Dungeon to uh, Betrayal at House on the Hill. Uh, <laughs> I forgot to I, mention I've fucking D&D. Catan. Uh, Settlers of Catan. Uh, fucking Monopoly. <laughs> it's... <laughs> <laughs> D and D, yeah, I play. Oh, of, course. of course, of course. I, oh I, yes, I I, I uh, play I play in two uh, weekly D and D games. Um, nice, yeah. It's uh, it's great. I, I'm playing right now. Playing as my uh, JoJo uh, st- uh, D and D character. It's a <laughs> good lord. It's it's a Echo Knight fighter bard. It's great. <laughs> Oh well, but um, just so just to revisit my answer, um, as we're counting that sort of stuff, um, I've been playing Call of Cthulhu, um, ah uh, yes, for of course, about over two years at this point with my with my normal boys, and it's a lot of fucking fun. Um, it's great. I find it a little bit more personally a bit more interesting in D and D because the HP Lovecraft horror element of it adds a lot more sort of suspense mm-hmm. and like, thrill to it, in my opinion. It's a lot more brutal as well. So you go through characters like fucking wild. Oh yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. Cthulhu <laughs> characters <laughs> <funny>. die in <laughs> seconds. I had one buddy of mine called Adam who went through about I think five or six characters in the campaign. <laughs> six. It, was, it was rough. Really. Rough. And then that was also the campaign while my guy went through. It was like a year long campaign. I almost got through it with one character. <laughs> Died the second to last combat phase in the whole. Rip. Campaign. Damn. Tragic. But that's part of the Tragedy. fun. You know? I think that's part of the fun. As opposed to because yeah, in a lot in a lot of modern D and D, it's way less lethal than it used to be. It's it's so much more about it's very little about combat nowadays because people who want combat oriented TTRPGs have switched eventually to Call of Cthulhu and to Warhammer Fantasy Battles and that sort of thing. But like, I'm sorry. Let's try. Let's try yeah, and wrap it up. A, a lot quickly. of the people who are into D and D nowadays are more into it for the storytelling and and you know playing around with their OCs, which is fun. That's definitely has a place. But like, it's way less mm. lethal than it used to be. So I think there's definitely a place for Call of Cthulhu to literally kill off your characters left, right, and center. And I had a fun idea. I had a fun oh, idea yeah. if I ever played Call of Cthulhu, and if my character kept dying, I would make it so that it's like reincarnations, like it's <laughs> continuous reincarnations <laughs> of the same guy. <laughs> Just add make his name longer every Locker. time. <laughs> right. Well, I think that pretty much sums it up. So, mm. everyone, thank you very much for watching. Thank you for staying all the way to the end of the episode. Yeah. Um. Thank you, Kronos, thank you. for hopping in. Thank you for having me. You, you've been, you've been a joy. Oh, thank now, you. Now, with with that said, thank you. Good night. Good morning, wherever you are. Have a good one. <laughs> Toodaloo. Bye bye. Chatty bye.